Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Friday night and we're gonna create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, I don't really have a ton of announcements tonight, so I'm just gonna jump right in uh, to let you guys know what we're working on tonight. Um, one of the uh, subscribers of this show, his name is Rome Dog. He's got his own channel where he does his own art. I encourage everybody to check it out. I forgot to link to um, the channel in the description below, uh, but if you just search for Rome Dog on YouTube, you'll find him. Um, but uh, anyway, his, his dog sadly passed away recently. So we're gonna draw his dog and hopefully it turns out great. Um, I can see Rome dogs already in the uh, chat. So uh, feel free to reach out to him and express your condolences. But um, we're just gonna jump right in and get started on this. Um, uh, usual disclaimer, I have no idea how long this is gonna uh, take. I usually keep it around two hours, but uh, if it ends up taking longer, um i'll uh i'll finish it up uh later on tonight or something and, and i always post my art i always post my uh, decent art not all, not all my art some of it turns out really horrible but um i usually post uh things that i don't finish in one sitting to the uh, community tab uh so i i do encourage people to um you know subscribe and check out the community tab to see some of my finished art um i've also got some other places i i think there's a link on here somewhere where you can find my like uh x.com and instagram and all of that jazz but anyway i'm gonna jump right in uh so if i can bring up so this is a uh, rome dog beautiful uh, uh american staffordshire terrier apparently uh i wasn't quite sure exactly what kind of dog this is but a beautiful dog um we're gonna try to create this dog on, on paper um and I've got a couple of different techniques I'm going to try. Hopefully they turn out all right. If not, Rome Dog, I swear I will I will draw you a better picture if this turns out horrible. You know how I guess. Sometimes things don't always work out right. Um, but if I go in here, um, so I do have kind of like a sketch so that I know where things are. So I keep the proportions correct. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy with this. It, it is a memorial uh, portrait, so I don't really want to like, you know, to be, be too experimental. That said, I am going to try a technique I've, I've done a couple of times on this show uh, where I add some uh, watercolor first just to kind of get like large areas of uh, color out of the way before I come back with colored pencils. Um, I still consider a drawing, even though I'm cheating and using a uh, watercolor to uh, to, um, you know, do some of the large areas of color. Uh, anybody who works with colored pencils may know that, you know, like getting a lot of area uh, done in color is sometimes a bit of a drag. When you're working with colored pencils, you end up having to apply a bunch of different layers. So the, for time and so forth, I'm going to try to um, apply some color with watercolor and then come back and uh, do a colored pencil drawing over that. Um, so with all that out of the way, let's just get into it. It is Friday night, so hopefully it's super chill. Just hang out, have a conversation, and so on. I see there's a couple of people in the room that you guys can chat with if you want. We got a uh, kid in here. We got Rome Dog. We got Mama Q. We got uh, OK Larry. Uh, hopefully it'll be an awesome night. So let's just have fun, have a drink, and relax, and paint a dog. Uh, paint Rome Dog, in fact. Um, so I, I do love this dog. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Hopefully, hopefully it turns out all right. Uh, sometimes my dogs kind of come out a little bit messy, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. So like I said, um, I wanted to kind of start with watercolor. I, I am using mixed media paper, so hopefully I'll hold that watercolor. It's not watercolor paper, uh, but it should be okay. I, I've done it before in the past, and it, it seemed to work out all right. But I, I do kind of want to do this just to get, like, larger areas of color down. I'm using, like, a yellow ochre here because, you know, they're... It's probably not technically a yellow dog, but when, when I look at it, I see a lot of yellow. So I'm going to start with that, and then we'll see how it goes from there. I, I may, like, correct some of the colors as I go along, uh, but, you know, just getting started. But how was everybody's week? Hopefully everybody's had a great week. I know first of the year, all that stuff. Uh, it's been my experience that people start to wake up. <laughs> like the first week of January and like, oh crap, I got a lot of work to do. So where are we at on our projects? And, you know, like every, everybody seems to be super motivated. It, it is the first of the year. It's a, it's a good time to start projects. But um, I, I find that there's always stuff left over from the end of the year that people also focus on. So you got that double whammy. I know for my own part, uh, I've got a few leftover projects from 2023 that I was hoping to get done. And then, you know, everybody checks out for the holidays. And then, Mon uh, like, this uh, this New Year started at the beginning of a week, too. So it, you got a triple whammy, actually, now that I think about it. It's like, 
people coming back on a Tuesday from holidays to just be like, oh, super motivated, all ready to get to work. Everybody's starting their diets and everybody's starting their New Year's resolutions. And it's just a whole big mess of uh, productivity that everybody's into. But that's cool. I'm into that kind of stuff. So I try to be, I try to be productive myself and, you know, keep busy and accomplish my goals. I don't like to just set arbitrary goals and just kind of like add them to a task list and never do them. I kind of, I kind of have a system for going through my uh, task list, which maybe I'll do a video about it sometime. Cause I think it's kind of cool. It's not, it's not necessarily anything I came up with on my own, but I think it works pretty well. It's kind of, um, kind of a system for getting things done and, uh, it works for me. It may not work for everybody, but Anyway, just plan, applying a base coat of yellow here, but um, let's see. Let's see what people are saying in chat. Yeah, uh, it, it, it sucks when people's dogs pass away. Uh, I know that Rome, Rome was super young, so that's even, that's even worse. But if you check out Rome, Rome Dog's channel, they, you know, this, this is the dog who had a good life. Like, went on a bunch of different adventures together, so that's the good news. Beautiful dog too. It's always nice. Um, I haven't yet had anyone send me an ugly dog to draw uh, or paint or anything like that. I'm, I'm kind of concerned about that, that maybe someday somebody will and I'll have to uh, paint a uh, an ugly dog, but everybody's always sent me these beautiful dogs to, uh, to draw and, and uh, paint and stuff. So I've really lucked out. But yeah. 14.5 year old dog. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So I think, yeah, that's why I couldn't tell uh, what dog this was is because I, it looked familiar. Like I've done um, dogs like this. Not only did I did kids dog, uh, which apparently was the same type of dog. Um, yeah, there are no ugly dogs. That's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to go to so far as to say there's no ugly dogs, but I take your point. You're right. There are no real ugly dogs. They're all beautiful. But there are some ugly dogs. <laughs> there's a there's a spectrum of beauty. There you go. They're all beautiful dogs, but there's a spectrum. If I, it usually uh, like all joking aside, um if if I do say an ugly dog, it's it's usually because it, it's it what it should be a beautiful dog and it just wasn't taken care of. That's usually what it is. But that that's a little more serious than making a joke about ugly dogs. Um, I I you know I've always been a pet lover and pet owner, and um, one of the worst things you can do is like you know mistreat your pet. And most people, you know, most people do take care of their pets, but like there's some people that take on pets that just don't treat them right and everything. And that's a real shame. Hopefully we as a species can move beyond that and treat these uh, dogs, you know, like kids, really. That, that's how they should be treated, in my opinion. I know that they're not human beings, but they might as well be because um, they are family members. They should be treated as such. I'm not like... <laughs> I don't want to give them the right to vote or anything like that. They'll be voting for um, dog treats, but they should be treated better. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, Zenva. I, I think that if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. How's it going? Rumors turning eight January sixteenth. Oh, okay, all right. So, yeah, for some reason I thought uh, Rome was younger than that, but. Yeah, eight years. That that's a good run, actually. I, I know that um, most dogs do live longer, but so I'm probably going to make a couple of passes with this watercolor, just because some areas are darker, and I kind of want to leave myself a little reminders of where there's uh, some tonal differences. But again, I, all of this, I'm just going to go back over with uh, colored pencils anyway. So I don't, I don't really want to add a lot of water to this because it's not watercolor paper. So, you know, that whole bowing, you can kind of see it here already. Um, I want to keep my, my brush a little bit dry. 
And I'm not just telling you guys this uh, so that you can learn from it. I'm, I'm saying it as kind of reminders to myself. I want to keep my brush a little bit dry, not too much water. But yeah, I think this is a good start for a um, for a, um, a pet portrait that you're going to do in like uh, ultimately colored pencils. And, you know, colored pencils do take a while to, uh, you know, make it look realistic. So I consider this kind of like a shortcut on that. I'm going to try to mix in some brown into this yellow ochre just to kind of get a little bit more brown in those ears so you have the you guys have the benefit of uh like a scrub bar i can't go back and look at the uh reference picture but if you guys wanted to you could you could kind of skip back and look at the reference picture and see how i'm going but in the reference picture the the ears are kind of in shadow so i'm gonna get some brown going up in here But yeah, hopefully you guys had a good week. Um, first week of the new year, it's pretty exciting. Hopefully you guys have some good weekend plans. You know, it, like I'm, I'm trying to remember how to get back in the swing of things because I did have that two week break before the holidays that uh, I was kind of checked out. So I'm trying to remember how to do these live streams and what we talk about on here. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think I always ask you guys what your weekend plans are on Fridays because like you guys help inspire me to do things. I don't really know what I'm doing this weekend. There's an art exhibit at a gallery that I might go to, um, which, which is weird because usually I go to art galleries for inspiration. This is this particular exhibit is like uh, nudes, so it's like I don't really do nudes, especially not like on uh, YouTube. So I don't know how much inspiration I'm going to get out of it, but you know. They do it every year. Uh, it's kind of like a yearly thing for them. So I thought I would go and check that out just to see, you know, what's new in the world of you and nudes. And um, there was another art exhibit um, for a guy who was a uh, he's a he he's from Kentucky. He's a I think he was a big artist during the fifties. Uh, Henry Faulkner. And um, they're doing like an art exhibit in honor of his hundredth birthday. Now he passed away, but he's uh, he's he's um, apparently his. I don't know the guy, so I I don't really want to talk too much about it because like I don't want to say the wrong thing. Like uh, you know, like this, like I don't know I don't know what kind of art he does or anything like that. But anyway, the point is you learn, right? So like I might go to his exhibit as well. Um, he was like a no, like a Nobel poet lottery, laureate, however you pronounce that. Um, anyway, he was a poet and an artist in the fifties and stuff. Apparently like he was a big to do. I don't know him personally, but, uh, he was friends with Tennessee Williams, which I thought was cool because like I grew up reading Tennessee Williams plays and stuff like that. And I always thought that was nice. So I know nothing about this artist, but I'm going to go check him out. Um, Henry Faulkner. And, uh, so that's. That's it for my weekend. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to go to an art gallery, two art galleries, check out two different exhibits. And um, no, I'm not drawing Cynthia Bill. Come on. <laughs> I don't it, like there's nothing wrong with like um, nudity in art, uh, especially if it's like, you know, at some point in your art career, you have to learn figure art and it, it just comes up. You have to do it. Um, I just try to keep this channel clean myself for uh because like, I don't know, kids watch this stuff. People come in here to like learn how to paint for some reason. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to be doing any of that on this show, but it just like, as far as like art itself, there's nothing wrong with that kind of stuff. Come on guys. Have you ever been to an art gallery? But that's my weekend. I don't think there's any movies in theaters, anything really to watch. January and February are so tough. Cause like it's it's just cold out there's nothing going on um i make the joke that january and february are the flyover months you know like the joke where you you go from new york to la and all the other states are just flyover states uh i i always make that joke about the the months of uh january and february they're just flyover months you just want to get past them there's nothing really going on i mean 
you know, that's probably not true. There's probably stuff, but it's nothing that like really I'm excited about. I, I'm an outdoorsy person. So as soon as it becomes spring, that's when I get excited. That's when I start waking up and being like, oh, okay. I want to go out kayaking. I want to go high, hi kayaking. <laughs> I want to go kayaking. I want to go hiking. I want to go camping maybe this year. I don't know. I want to start taking some road trips. There's nothing in January and February. It sucks. It's probably worse in other states, like where you're literally under snow and you start getting that cabin fever and everything. It's a good time to practice art. Um, it hasn't really been cold enough to snow around here, which is weird. Because, uh, like, this area, um, it's kind of hit or miss when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, some years we have deep ice, and then other years uh, it's been kind of a mild winter. Now I say that, and then next week it'll dump a ton of snow on us, but so far it hasn't been that bad. Um, when it does, I'm going to go out and take some photos, because I really want to do some winter art, you know, like landscapes and stuff in the snow. Uh, maybe some horses in the snow, that'd be kind of cool, like in a field of snow. But since, you know, we haven't had any of that yet, it's still kind of just brown out there. Uh, I haven't really been inspired. Even even though that could be beautiful too, but you know, but I wouldn't really call that winter. Uh, you see the same stuff in fall and, and everything. So I haven't been super inspired to create any kind of landscapes and stuff yet. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I feel super inspired this year. I want to create like a bunch of cool art. Um, I've been uh, getting uh, how much snow do we get? We don't. We don't get a lot of snow. We get like maybe two, three inches or something. Um, and it usually sticks around for like a week or so because like it usually comes with the deep freeze. But it's it's not a lot of snow. We never get, um, I think, I don't know, maybe we got a foot at some point, but it's not, it's, it's pretty rare. We're like kind of in the center of the U.S. So it's, it, it's a pretty good climate. Um, I don't know. I like Kentucky. I, I don't recommend it to everybody. It's, it's kind of like your own personal preferences. Um, but I like it. It's a, it's a pretty temperate climate. It never gets too hot, never gets too cold. It's just kind of like, I don't know, it's like in the Goldilocks zone, if that makes sense. You want to see the Iron Claw movie, uh, but your theater didn't... I, I'm not aware of that. Like, uh, I have to look that up. There is some streaming stuff that I still haven't gotten to that I want to get to, like the um, the Reacher series. Uh, I haven't gotten to that yet, even though that's been out for a little bit. Uh, I still haven't watched Fargo. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Fargo, and uh, there's a new season that came out like over the holidays. There's a lot of stuff that came out over the holidays that I didn't get to. I love the cheekbones of these animals. Just these these jowls are just really nice my own dog uh, Guinness kind of has these jowls so I know it kind of looks rough now but um, you know this is just basically an underpainting for a pencil drawing so I'm not that concerned at this point Let me try to get some black up in here through here it's a little bit darker and again i'm not being super detailed at this point with any of this stuff it's mostly to kind of like let me let myself know where uh various anatomy is so that when i come back with the pencil it, it's almost like a like a rough sketch that i will use with the uh pencil later so the the idea is that you have less work you have to do with the pencil if you do like a, a base painting essentially that's the strategy Eric brothers wrestling um oh zach efron i like zach efron that's cool all right i'll, I'll look that up uh, q you know i only do these live streams so that i can get recommendations of what to watch on tv in, in the theaters like, without you guys, I, I wouldn't know. Like, I mean, sure, I could subscribe to, like, feeds or something like that and learn, but I'd rather go to the source. If you guys like it, I'll watch it. 
trying to think of what else. I never did get around to seeing the Barbie movie, but now that's on, uh, I think, HBO. So I'm going to watch that at some point. The problem is over the um, the holidays, I kind of got into watching old series that I hadn't seen in a while, just as like background stuff while I was working on projects. And um, and uh, I've been watching Community again, which I love that show. Like, I forgot how funny it was. I mean, it's it's pretty old now. It's It's been out for like a couple of decades. But man, that is such a funny show. It's, uh, it, it's probably... So like, there's a couple of series that I can put on in the background while I'm doing other things and I don't feel like I'm missing anything, but every time I kind of like glance over at the TV just to see what's going on and stuff, it, it just is so good. Um, community is one of them. I would say always sunny in Philadelphia. I can watch that a million times over. Um, there's probably a couple of other series that I can't think of. I mean, a lot of people, for a lot of people, that's like the office, like the office is something you can put on in the background and not have to watch too closely, but, just kind of make your way through the seasons. Kind of getting a little bit of a beard going here from this little puppy. Yeah, I, I like dogs like this. Um, now, all my dogs are mutts, but um, this is the type of dog I think I would like if I was choosing a purebred, maybe. Just something kind of medium size, not too big, not too small. Like, I'm not really into, like, chihuahuas or, or anything like that. Like, that's what I mean by small dogs. Um, and no offense, if, if you have a chihuahua, I'm not dissing your dog or anything like that. I'm just, you know, they always seem a little bit yappy. That's not my thing. Um, these are good lap dogs, I think. You know, they just sit around and just make you happy. That's, that's my kind of dog. I like, I like dogs that just kind of are good companions. You know, they just hang around with you. Kind of get a little bit of contrast going here just because like the top of the nose is going to be white. Yeah, I should just do a watercolor picture to be honest with you, but I'm committed to doing a little of both here. I like dogs that, um, like my dogs are snorers. I like dogs that just kind of, just kind of sleep all day and snore. And then like when you want to go to the P-A-R-K, um, they're like, they instantly become energized and they just get all happy and stuff. Or like, you know, when it's dinner time or something, they just jump out of bed and be like, all right, let's go. That's, that's my type of dog. They, they go from like full stop to full go. Hey, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this, like where you guys live or whatever, but I've been seeing um, a lot of like service dogs more. Um, I don't know if that's just changing uh, ideas of what constitutes a service dog, but I've been seeing a lot more people with uh, dogs that like say, I don't know, like Walmart or something like that than I have ever in the past. Um, I don't know if that's just like a trend or something. I think that's kind of cool. I don't know if I would take my dog to the store and stuff like that. But I, I like that trend. I, I think, I think pets should be able to uh, go more places. I know my, uh, I don't ever really take my dog uh, to the bar, but my brother's dog, he's always taking his dog with him. And uh, there's a lot more restaurants, bars that allow dogs now. Which, you know, if you're a bar owner, <laughs> like in case some random bar owner is watching my uh, channel um it, it makes good business sense you should allow that like because uh you know they don't they don't uh they don't cause any problems they just lay there and look cute and stuff it's good for business people should uh allow dogs in their bars and it's so weird because most of the ones around here do yeah, so like, yeah, uh, more um, more service dogs at Costco. It just seems like a growing trend, and I like it. I think it's a great trend. I think people should be able to take their pets wherever they want. I think some of the excuses they used in the past just don't really hold water. Like, you know, things like, I don't know, like 
health concerns or something like that. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. It, you know, you'd have a pet in your home. It doesn't make any sense that, you know, having a dog at the store or something would be anything like less sanitary. Plus, it, you know, I think, I don't know what the requirements are for service dogs, but my, my, my intuition is that they're well-trained, you know, they don't just like let any dog around. They're not going to get in fights with customers or anything like that. Yeah, Rome Dog. When I, so Rome Dog said, uh, whenever I went to the store, he would sit in the car watching me like we were doing a bank job. I love it. Yeah, that's the that's the best uh, dog. You know, they got your back. They're watching out for you while you're off the bank. They, and my um, uh, my dogs that whenever I I take them out to uh, drive, they like to sit in the driver's seat. So it's funny because people walk by and the dog's sitting there as if they're about ready to to drive the getaway car. It's great. Hey, hater. How's it going, man? We're uh, we're doing Rome Dog today. Um, Rome Dog was a ah um, oh, crap! I already forgot the name. It, it, I'm sure Rome will uh, repeat it, but some some sort of terrier. Again, I always end up with uh, I, I'm, I'm terrible with names anyway. Uh, whether it's dog breeds, uh, cat breeds, horse breeds, all of that stuff. I just suck at that. It's just not my, I just don't have the memory space to remember all the different breeds and, and so on. Plus I drink a lot, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but that's my excuse for not remembering things. I, I just don't have the mental capacity for it because it's filled with alcohol. Got a little white furry belly here, so I'm going to leave some of that in here. I guess I'll extend this out to the side. I think that's a pretty good base coat so far. Got, got a little bit of a paw here, but that's kind of white. I'm going to leave that to do with colored pencil. Again, this layer is just to kind of get some color into it so that you have less work that you have to do when you come back with the um, the colored pencils later. That's the idea. Am staff or staffy. Staffordshire. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Damn. I really, really wish I was better at uh, these things. Especially if I keep doing pet portraits, which I really enjoy doing. So, like, you know, any kind of thing that you do, take on is like, um, you know, your your interest and stuff like that. It it's a good idea to like learn the terminology. Like, I I kind of um, speaking of that, I I suck at like identifying the different types of art. Like, I don't know, expressionist and. Uh, impressionist and realism and all of these different things i kind of have a little bit of like working knowledge of that just you know because like i see some of the terms used more often than not but in general i don't retain that kind of stuff so it really sucks um every time i go to the um to like an art museum for example i don't really know what i'm looking for until i see it and then i'm like oh yeah okay that's what that's called so I do suck at that. I got to get paper towel. Hold on. And um, I, I really shouldn't need a paper towel for this, but I wanted to switch colors here because I was wondering if I wanted to do this part in in um, colored pencil, but I think I'm going to attempt. So this, this area here is white, but it's in shadow. So I kind of wanted to get a base shadow going down here. Um, just so that, again, it's it's to alleviate the work that you'd have to do in colored pencil. So, like, if you get a nice little base tone going, it's going to save you some uh, trouble later. Plus, it allows you to have these kind of, again, visual references that you can use, like, when you're going to do your pencil work, I guess, line work, whatever the term is, um, you know, like, you know what parts you're coloring in because, like, you've got, you've got some, like, shadows areas in here and stuff like that. So, for example, I know that this part here, let me grab just a little bit more. I know that this part here is kind of in shadow, so I kind of want to just kind of smear that in so that I know, okay, the highlight here kind of stops here, that sort of thing. That's the idea. Now... 
Um, this was in the reference photo. Like, I, I think as far as compositions go, like if I was photographing um, Rome Dog uh, for a portrait, I probably would have included the paw, but it's it's not in the uh, reference, so I'm not going to try to invent a paw. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. I would I would probably have, you know, a little bit of paw in here, but because I don't, I'm just kind of fading it out, essentially, if that makes sense. I don't know, it doesn't make much sense to me, but hope y'all doing good, fellas. Much love and respect to you. You always have a positive attitude. I like that about you, hater. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, let me know. Um, as far as I, I, I think, uh, Saeed, uh, hater, Abbas, not V. Anyway, I, I think you go off, uh, go by the name, uh, hater. Um, so I, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like, um, you know, I'm saying hater. Uh, like that probably is how I'm making it sound. And I do apologize about that, but yeah, no, you're good people, man. You're always got a positive attitude. I love that. I love it when people bring positivity to the world because we definitely need more of it. Just good vibes. There you go. That's the way I put it. Good vibes. All right, so I think I think I'm gonna make all of this kind of like a light gray, and then I'll come back over it with some darker areas to represent the actual eyeballs. I think that's a good plan there. All right, so I think that's pretty good start. While that's drying, let me see if there's some touch up areas I can kind of go back over. Again, it's all so that less pencil work, you know which is really the time sink, you know? Oh, okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to continue calling you a uh, hater, and uh, hopefully that's right. Cool. Yeah, it's, um, any of you guys, like, if I mispronounce your names, I'm sorry. I suck at that. So don't take it as a... Uh, don't be a, um, offended by anything I say. Kind of darken up this ear up here. I like I like that. And just smear that around a little bit. Now there's some pink areas in this ear, but that's definitely a colored pencil touch up after it dries. And the cool thing about it is like this is already pretty much dry. Like there's still some moisture in there causing that buckling, but not enough that you can't go over it with pencil. Like I've I've basically gone over wet areas with pencil. It's not a big problem. Like theoretically, it could cause problems, but I ha I've never really encountered any kind of thing where I'm worried about it. So, just a little bit of a little bit of an explanation, I guess. So you do have kind of like this dark area here. Now this is a part that I am concerned with. So you have this like buckling here. It kind of sucks. Like uh, I kind of talked about this with my coffee picture last week, but that was on watercolor picture uh, paper. It kind of sucks when you get that buckling and stuff because, like, you kind of have to work around it because you don't really want it to pull. So you kind of have to mop it up a little bit. Darker areas up here. Some darker areas around there. Can bring it around. But, you know, you just kind of keep working it, maybe move things around as you go along. Hater is a cool name. 100%. Um, kind of like Bill Hader um, from Saturday Night Live. I always thought that was a cool name. Now, oh, that's another show that, like, well, not recently. I watched that, like, um, last year. Whatever that show, uh, what is the name of that show? Barry. Barry. It, yeah, that is the latest show. I like that one. Um, that finally wrapped up, I think, last year. Finally got around to watching the end of it. I don't know if that's how I would have ended it, but it was, it's a good show. But yeah, I've mostly been watching um, shows I've already seen, just kind of, it's comfort, comfort viewing, I guess that's what they call it. So 
see, there are some black areas. So I think I'll go ahead and put in, I'll take a little bit of care with this so that I get somewhat straight lines. I'm used to drawing things just kind of like expressive where I'm not paying a lot of attention to straight lines which I really don't have to do here because again, I will be coming over it with colored pencil, cleaning things up, but might as well take a little bit of care. And again, I'm not going crazy with the details on this. I just want to kind of get a little bit of the uh, puppy's harness going here and kind of just leave that a little bit. I guess the other thing I can do here, which for some reason I forgot to do, is go ahead and get in a nose. That's the best part of a dog. Best part of a dog, probably open to opinion, is the nose and the ears. I like to boop the nose and I like to rub the, I like to do like this to my dogs. They love it. Not all dogs probably do, but mine do. Been watching Pirate Software streaming? Cool. Like I said, I haven't ever watched <laughs> like pirated material. I'm going to say on this channel that no, I don't watch pirated material, but. I think there's a tradition of that. I actually like bootlegging goes way back. Bootlegged, um, I don't know, like music, bootleg software but bo like movies it's kind of like a long tradition of that kind of stuff and that's probably why it costs you fifty dollars to go to the movies because they have to make up their costs but you know it's just what it is who am i to judge so over here you kind of have some swatches i think i'm going to do that in pencil and it's kind of Get a little bit of this in here, and then I'll kind of clean this up, I think, a bit in color pencil. Bill Mom pronounced my name like um, that. Hi, Hydar. Oh, okay. Oh, Blizzard, cool. So, like, um, I don't know, like EverQuest or whatever. What are some new titles from, uh, I, I don't play enough video games where, or games in general. I play some board games, but I don't get enough time to, uh, really get into like the whole gaming scene. I wish I did. Smear this out. Yeah, I think I'm just going to kind of smear this out and then kind of come back over it with, uh, white. Here in a few. How are we doing on time? Yeah, I think 40 minutes on the base. It's probably cool. Just kind of rough in a, a mustache and beard here. Now there is some pink area in here. I'm definitely doing that in colored pencil because I, I think that's kind of cool. All right. So while I've got the dark area, and I think this might be the last thing I do in paint, is let's go ahead and come in here and darken up this eye here. Just again, so that I have to less pencil to put in. Now there is some whites of the eyes. I'm going to kind of leave that a little bit light gray. These eyes always look creepy until you put in details. Like just these weird eyes. And then kind of a hint of um, this eye over here. You don't really see that much. So just kind of putting a hint that there is an eye over there. Um, maybe like a little swoosh here. Cool. I think that's a good start. Um, I, I do think you picked the right picture for this uh, Rome dog. I know you sent me several and uh, you were kind of on the fence on which ones you, you wanted to choose. This is a really good picture of uh, Rome dog, I think. All right, so most of this is dry, so I feel comfortable working with it. I think I'm just going to jump, uh, jump right in with my, my pencil, my uh, brown pencil, and just kind of, you know, start start getting some details in here so that it doesn't look as washed out. 
and then I think I'll jump all over the picture, kind of working it like that, and then whatever I get done tonight, I get done, and then whatever kind of touch-ups I need to do, I'll I'll uh, I'll finish up in the morning. So I should say the reason why I'm not using watercolor paper, you could, um, but again, I'm I'm trying to get better at creating pictures faster. Okay, so one of the part of the strategy there is that. Um, you know, like some things end up taking a crap ton of time. And uh, one of those is that like whenever I do watercolor paper with colored pencils, because of the texture of the paper, I find that it takes forever to really push that colored pencil into those grooves and uh, get rid of that texture. Which, you know, like if there's nothing wrong with doing that, um, arguably it'll come out looking really nice. Um, but I, I wanted to like save some time by going with the smoother paper. So I'm using this mixed media paper that doesn't have that kind of texture. And um, that's a, that's a time saver, I think. So like you can't really see it on camera because this isn't that bad, that great of a camera, but already just coming in and um, adding some brown over this base thing, I'm starting to get some detail in without um, without a lot of work, you know, like if I was doing this just in colored pencil, I'd probably have to create several layers to make it like look nice and blended. It's a, it's a bit of a time saver. So just a tip for people who do colored pencils, I don't see anything wrong with like, technically it's mixed media. Like you can't just say it's just colored pencils at that point, but nobody cares. Um, you know, go ahead and go ahead and do an underpainting in watercolor and it'll, It'll save you some time. The results look nice, I think. Like I've done several of these and they all turn out okay. You know, like none of my pictures are probably gonna win any awards or anything like that. And I'm cool with that. I'm still learning, you know, progressing and stuff like that. But I think it's, um, I think it's a cool way, uh, process really. My, my dad is D.B. Cooper. Let me let me do an age check on that. Let's see. He was born in 52, 1952. And D.B. Cooper was 1971. Um, he'd have to be a young D.B. Cooper. Like, super young. So, like, I think D.B. Cooper, they guessed that that guy was, like, in his 40s. They'd have to have guessed really wrong. Now, my dad's dad maybe was D.B. Cooper, but I, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, my dad just turned 70 recently, so I think he's a little young to be D.B. Cooper. But that's a good guess. It's certainly, uh, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> I really wouldn't. <laughs> But no, I think I, in 2024, you have to guess that your grandparents are uh, D.B. Cooper, not your parents at this point. Because uh, that was back in the, uh, I think it was 1971, if I'm remembering correctly. So that was a while back. Now, my dad, when he drinks, he sometimes goes back to 1971. He starts saying, hey, man, how's it going, man? So he's definitely reliving his youth then. Uh, in fact, he's been, um, I don't think he's listening. Uh, in fact, he's been banned from having Long Island iced teas for that reason. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to tell tales. But no, not D.B. Cooper, probably. Good guess, though. It'd be hilarious. Yeah, because uh, how old would D.B. Cooper be? So if he was if he was in his 40s at the time that skyjacking occurred. <laughs> uh, he's a he's a trip. Like, I, I think um, I, I think I told the story. If I haven't, then that's fine. Uh, but I think I told the story about how when, when we used to go camping and looking for that treasure out there in the Rocky Mountains, um, we ran into some other people from the community who had stolen our campsite. Like, uh, there was this lady out there when we went to go get uh, dinner 
like some food supplies and stuff like that we come back she had done stole our campsite and um she's actually I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give her a name but she's actually people is somebody that people know in the community which makes it even more fun it's not like just some rando it's actually somebody who's uh who's known to others and um I talk to people and stuff like that but anyway she 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 stole our campsite and um and uh it's kind of funny because like she recognized me from the blogs um without me even saying who i was i was like uh i think that's our campsite and she's like jeremy is that you and uh, i'm like oh cool like uh, i had no idea who she was uh but she knew who i was and um we we got to talking and we just spent the entire night like around a campfire just shooting the shit about that treasure hunt and it was great my dad was there and he was like the problem is my dad will talk your ear off if you think i talk a lot this guy you, you don't want to start a conversation with them and actually have something that you've got to do. It's just, <laughs> you're never going to be able to extract yourself from that conversation. Um, just real quick. So this area is still a little damp because I went over it with that um, brown paint just a minute ago. So I feel that as I'm going over it with the uh, colored pencil, but it doesn't really matter. Like I'm still able to work over it. I just have to be a little bit careful so that I'm not damaging the paper or anything like that. I just want to call attention to that. But anyway, yeah, my dad... My dad will talk year off. Uh, he he was in the military, and I think he gets it from being a drill instructor in the military, which is totally not his personality. He is not the the typical drill sergeant that you would imagine. It's almost more like um, if a uh, Hawkeye from Mash was a drill instructor as well. That that's probably more like what my dad would be. But anyway, he'll talk year off. Is my point. <laughs> Which is not that different from me, I guess, because I just spent 15 minutes telling you that my dad will talk to you to hear it off, which is like a three-word thing to say. My dad will talk your ear off. Seven-word thing to say. I could have said that in two seconds. And I'm still talking about it. I can't stop. 13 Long Island iced teas one night. Yeah. Oh, one dollar. Nice. Was this in Vegas? That's what I love about Vegas. You get as many drinks as you want for like a dollar tip. But yeah, Long Island nice tea. It's not really my thing. Um, I see why other people like it, but it's not really my thing. It's um, it's kind of too sweet for me. It's the rum in it. That I'm not a big rum drinker. I think it's rum in it. I don't know. But I've had them and they're okay, but it's not really my thing. I'm not... I'm not a big blended drink kind of person. I like, um, you know, whatever it is, I want to experience that and just that. I just want that experience. But I do like cocktails, so that maybe that's not exactly true. But for the most part, I just like to drink a straight drink, you know, nothing in it. I'm the same way with coffee, too, like straight up espresso. Um, maybe add milk to it, but beyond that, I like the pure experience. I'm a very classic kind of guy. You're banned from tequila for all time. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're all banned from something. Dang. I guess I gotta use this paper towel to my nose runs constantly. <laughs> Ouch. You should not use paper towel to wipe your nose. Just pro tip there. For anybody who was wondering, don't use paper towels to wipe your nose. But what can you do if you're on camera? Yeah, we're probably all bound and banned from something. Um, the funny thing is, uh, I enjoy I enjoy um, bourbon mostly because I live in Kentucky and I, I kind of like well everybody else is drinking bourbon so let me try it and stuff like that. But um, I go to drink like whiskey and it's it's not the same and you know like scotch it's not the same i i like these drinks but it's it's not the same thing you know and um the the funny thing is like i probably should be banned from <laughs> liquor in general um i know that like there was a long time when i couldn't drink liquor just because i drank a lot of it like when i was a teenager like everybody does and i kind of drank too much of it and i got sick and um, I just couldn't stand the smell of it for a while. But now it, it's funny how people change over time because now it's like, I actually like the smell. Um, I like going to a distillery and uh, smelling all of the, um, the different things that go into, like 
if you've never been to a distillery, you wouldn't know that it smells like a campfire. Like there is, um, there's all of these organic ingredients that go into making, um, what, they, what they call it, the mash, I think. All these, all these like natural ingredients that go into making the mash and then they cook it and, you know, it smells like, it smells wonderful. Uh, I love that smell. But back in the day, I couldn't, you know, like just because I had that bad experience with, with drinking that like almost had me swear, swear it off. But I, that was so long ago that I've recovered from that and I, it doesn't bother me as much anymore. Yeah, the purists. There you go. I like it. I, I like the idea of purists. It's like if you're going to drink bourbon, for example, enjoy the bourbon. Why add a bunch of like, or like coffee? Everybody can relate to coffee. So if you're going to drink coffee and you like coffee, then drink coffee. If you go and add a bunch of syrups to it and stuff, like, I don't know, vanilla syrups to it or whatever, you're basically drinking vanilla syrup. It, it, you know, and at what point does it stop being coffee and start becoming vanilla syrup? That's the way I look at it. So like, I like the taste of coffee. So I'm going to drink pure coffee and pure coffee is not good for you. Like there's, it, it's very acidic. So I might add milk to kind of balance that out and get rid of some of that acidity, but I'm still not trying to get away from the taste of coffee. And I, I don't understand. Well, I understand why Starbucks does it because they want to make money, but I don't understand why people go in and basically get the equivalent of a milkshake at Starbucks. It's like, do you want coffee or do you want a milkshake? If you want a milkshake, go to Steak and Shake or something like that. You know, I don't, I don't get it. It's just, I don't know. I, I sound like a crabby old man or something like, oh, these kids these days drinking milkshakes. I don't get it. Um, but now don't get me wrong. I enjoy a treat every now and then, like a, like a nice frappuccino or something like that. Or, I, and I do like iced coffee, and I do, when I drink iced coffee, want it to be a little bit on the sweet side. I'm just saying, my natural inclination is, if I want coffee, I want coffee. I don't, I don't want, like, sugar. Like a sugar drink or something. Uh, yeah, so we're drawing uh, Rome Dog, actually. This is the, um, this is Rome Dog's dog that recently passed away. So, um, certainly, it's a, it's a memorial portrait. Unfortunately, um, be, unfortunately, because it's such a beautiful dog, I hate, like, it, it's always tough to do these. Um, it really is, but there's nothing more rewarding than doing these. I, I, I hesitate to say I enjoy doing them because it's such a tragic thing, but there's nothing more rewarding than doing a memorial portrait of a, of a pet that passed away. It, it's what brings me joy. Um, and it's weird to say that because it's not the, your typical sense of joy, but it, it feels like I'm, I'm doing something important. That, that, that's the only way I can really put it. it it's hard to, uh, express. Where's my glass? There's my glass. Yep. Glass is always in the picture. It's not always bourbon, but I always have something going on. Unless it's like a daytime live stream and then I'm probably drinking coffee or water or something like that. But it's Friday night. We're here to have fun, you know? So I'm going to... Yes, sweet angel. Exactly wrong. You made four gallons of some wine with meow mix. It's a secret ingredient. <laughs> Come on, man. How is that good? <laughs> what? How did how did meow mix make wine good? You're going to have to explain that one. What, like, I can see that doing that as a joke for your buddy. You know, here, try this. Uh, but how does that actually taste good? Now, don't get me wrong. I can see Meow Mix tasting good, but, like, is a, is a wine? Like, if the apocalypse happened, right, and um, a bunch of zombies running around or something, and everybody's looking for food to live off of because, like, the the entire structure of humanity has collapsed, I, I would eat dog food. I would eat dog food and smile. You know, it, it, it's probably not as bad as people make it out to be. Um, I tried it when I was a kid, and it wasn't that bad. That said, I would not be making wine out of it. That doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm not calling you a liar. I believe you. I just don't understand it. That's all. Meow wine. I love it. Yeah, there you go. Box that stuff up. Sell it. Meow wine. Made with the finest meow mix. 
This is some core baby mix right here. Uh, yeah, you'd have to explain that one to me. That's all. Yeah, Togo stuffed. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, um, one of my dogs passed away, and I considered um, I considered getting her stuffed, to be honest. I, I really did. And they had this new service, uh, like cloning, and I was so grief-stricken that I actually considered that. But I kind of stopped short of, like, getting a cloned dog, for um, which is, I think that's what they they called it i think it was straight up cloning because it it's not the same like it's basically the same dna or whatever i think that's why they can call it cloning but it's not it's not your dog which i don't know that that dog was really tough for me to like let go um uh i think i think she was 15 maybe 13 when she passed away but she had some sort of breathing problem like her her esophagus was too small or something like that I always say it's because she had such a big heart. Um, but yeah, that was, that was tough. That, that was really tough because she was my best friend, like my constant companion. Um, these dogs, they hang out with me. They do things with me and stuff. But this dog went with me everywhere. It was tough. It was real tough, guys. And um, yeah, I took that one hard. And, you know, all those, all those things like cloning and, you know, things like that. It, it, was, it all crossed my mind, but I, I ended up not doing it. And uh, that was, I don't know, I want to say 10, 20, 10, 15 years ago. I don't remember exactly how long ago that was, but that was a tough one. And I don't think I ever really recovered, you know, like you, lo you lose a pet like that and that sticks with you. So, yeah, dogs are tough. Togo is um, done by the same taxidermist that does animals for fish and wildlife displays. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, some of the taxidermy stuff, uh, it's pretty impressive. That's an art right there, you know? Like, that's an art all in its own. It's basically sculpture. I mean, it's a little morbid, you know, to think about the, the you know, family member being taxidermy. But, you know, if we look at it, like, just kind of removed from the what it is going on, it's a, it's a, it's an art form. It really is. I wouldn't mind being taxidermy, to be honest. Like, I was thinking about that. Like, eh, should I be mummified or taxidermy? That that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I think I think that'd be a lot of that'd be an interesting way to go. You know, try to preserve you like how you look in real life. I know you're talking about a pet, but now I'm talking about like, do I want to be taxidermy when I die? But see, I rely on you guys for great ideas. You know, now now I want to kind of put that in my will. Please taxidermy me. So as you can see, because I put in that base painting, like you'd have to scrub back to kind of see how the progress goes. Um, it's it's kind of like it makes the drawing process easier and, and less work. So like for example, I can put in like a rigid fur up here um, to kind of give you the idea that there is this like patch of fur up here that's caused by the brow and I don't have to draw each individual hair because I already have that base painting in there. And you know, you don't have to do like a watercolor picture. You can kind of maybe use like tone paper or something like that, especially if you're doing like a black and white picture um, or there's other techniques and stuff like that. But I like, I like just using watercolor. Theoretically, you could use pencil too and blend it out with solvent or, or something like that. People do that. Um, but also it just use watercolor. It, it works as just as well. And it, it kind of makes for a more interesting picture. So it, it's kind of a hybrid between a watercolor picture and, uh, like a, a, a drawn picture. But I have to be careful here because he has actually a really narrow, um, stripe. Let, let's call it a blaze. Yeah. So he has this like really narrow blaze coming across his, his forehead. So I needed to extend this out. So this is where my base painting actually failed me because I didn't extend it as far as maybe I should have. And this probably will take more layers um, to really uh, develop, but 
I think I think this is a process to get a good start to it. You, you can always add more to it later. Really press this, uh, the, um, the pencil into the paper to get like more smoother looks. Viking funeral, now we're talking. A motorized dog, so it can talk. There was a, um, there was a crow, a very famous crow uh, nearby, like around these parts and stuff. Um, they they taxidermied the crow and actually put in animatronics like early animatronics this was like years back like i, I want to say this is like early 1900s or something way before disney ever came out um and they put in some sort of like animatronics so that the crow could talk because that was the thing it was it was like it's supposed to be a talking crow it was like a very famous uh, crow in the community and um they wanted to kind of preserve that feature so yeah similar deal that's uh that's kind of funny I mean, it's not funny. It's your dog, but yeah. There's no wrong answers, Bill. Whatever you need to do, Bill. I mean, grief, grief is grief. You know, I, I really don't think that there's any proper or expected way to um, deal with loss. I, I kind of, I, there's no judgments for me. I, I look at it as like, and this is, this is even with people at funerals and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. You, you hear people talk and they're like, um, I don't know if that person's sad enough. You know, it's like, what? That person isn't sad enough for you? Or like, well, I don't think that person should be like, um, you know, laughing at a funeral. It's like, come on. It's, it's like grief is personal. It, like people deal with it in different ways. I, you won't catch me judging somebody on how they grieve. I, I'll, I'll be judging the people who are judging people. There you go. Because, like, I mean, it's tough. It's, it's one of the worst things that we have to go through as human beings. It's um, it's uh, it's it's part of the human experience, but it's the worst part. It, it, grief. And however, however you deal with it, whatever comfort you find from having your dog <laughs> rigged up with, like, an animatronic mouth, I mean, you know, that's your thing, man. I think that, I think that's totally fine. In fact, I'm I'm interested to see how that worked out. Like that that actually sounds really interesting. But yeah, when it comes to pets, it, it's just tough because they. I mean, they're better than some people. To be honest, it's like, you know, I I don't even want to say like, well, they're like people. And it's like, no, they're better than people. They're more loyal. They're not going to, like, screw you over. They'll listen to your dumb jokes. Pets are, pets are awesome. And I know, you know, like, anybody does pet portraits and stuff like that. I, I get that I'm not doing anything special here. Uh, everybody does these. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I prefer to do them, to be honest. Uh, like, I would rather do a pet portrait then um well i like doing people portraits too but for similar reasons but um just capturing something that somebody is emotionally attached to in, in a picture there, there's no greater honor in my opinion like i can go down to the bar and i can draw like bar flies and stuff people just hanging out and everything and, you know i'm not above doing that i enjoy doing that as well it's just when you get right down to it like the important work, I think, is like doing these memorial pictures. I think that's my view on that, at least. Yeah. Honestly, now now you guys got me thinking about my dog that I spent all my time with and stuff. That that was rough. She was a good dog. Her her name was Mocha. <laughs> you can tell I like coffee. I named my dog Mocha Chino. Um, I think I think what uh, I didn't really have like I looked into things like uh like the cloning and stuff like that. I, what I ended up settling with is and I think I have that yeah I have that right here. So there was some service that would take her ashes and made like a like a little marble out of it. And I think that's kind of cool. So like she's in here somewhere. 
I don't know how that works, but I keep that at my desk just so that I don't forget. And then I've got, I think this picture up here. There we go. That's actually me and her. It's cute. Puppies. They're, they're so cute. And they, they just, they just affect us so much. I don't know what to think, to be honest. It has been a while, so, like, time does help, you know. It's just something you have to go through, but it's still rough. There's no right or wrong or easy way to deal with it. You just have to, you just have to go through it. But this guy's super cute. Hey, Ada. Hi, Ida. Sorry, I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You gotta bear with me. Hi, Ida. There we go. I just spent like I don't know, like an hour talking about how I suck with names. <laughs> I apologize. I got back from kayaking. That's cool. That's uh, that's one of my favorite pastimes. I love kayaking. It's it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, I like kayaking because you're like, you're kind of one with the water, you know, it, it like, you can go on like a bigger boat or whatever, but you're kind of like removed from it. I like being, um, in touch with the water. <laughs> if that doesn't sound lame. Thanks, Mama Q. I appreciate that. Thanks. I don't know about the talent bit, but I'm working on it. Um, what's kind of cool is, uh, I started this channel pretty much the first week of January last year. So it, it's kind of neat, this neat benchmark. Um, you know, I'm not where I want to be yet, you know, like, and I don't know if it's going to take another three, four or five years to get to where I want to be. Uh, but I, I get to look back and, and this is what's so great about doing a YouTube show um, or just journaling in general, like, I guess this would be like vlogging in a way, but you get to look back at your progress. And I, I think that's so cool that, um, you know, that this kind of affords you that opportunity. So I started my channel, like, I mean, if you check the date on it, I've had this account since, I don't know, like 2011 or whatever, but I only really started this art show, um, the first week of January last year. So if I, I mean, I can look at my art and be like, ah, it's nowhere near where I want it to be. I want to be a master, right? Um, I can, I can have that look, uh, outlook on it. And, you know, sometimes I do, I reserve the right to, you know, be a little down and out about my progress. But the truth of it is I was not drawing pictures like this last year, this time. So it, it's really cool to have that date to compare to, like I can go back to, January 2023 and compare it to January 2024 and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. There is progress there. It, it is worth doing. It is worth sticking with and, and so on. You know, that that's awesome. Uh, this is Rum Dog. So um, Rum Dog, uh, who commented a little bit above you, this is his dog uh, that recently passed away. And if you want to get to know this dog, he has a channel all about their adventures together and stuff. It's really kind of cool. So I encourage you to check that out. But yeah, this is Rome Dog. Cute little awesome uh, terrier. Yeah, I think I'm going to work on this nose a little bit. Like, well, let me, let me kind of clean up this eye a little bit. And then I'll work on the nose. And then I feel like, you know... I can do whatever details might need to be done and they're not as critical to making it look decent. So let me clean up this eye a little bit. Get some detail around here. Yeah. All right. So now let me focus on this nose just because it looks like a muddy mess here. So there is kind of a, a little bit of a ridge there that kind of comes down. Kind of comes up. And again, 
you know, one of the reasons why you might do a base um, uh, picture like this is, or a base uh, painting, uh, before you come back over it with colored pencil, is the base painting kind of guides you when you get to the color. Uh, so I don't really have to wonder where this nostril goes. I kind of set myself a reminder when I was doing the, um, the watercolor part. And it kind of works really well to just kind of flow right into the nostril and the rest of the uh, structure of the nose. There we go. That makes sense. What? Um, so so uh, Hater says, Jeremy, I told my friends about Olivia, and one of them who works in an apparel factory got me three Team Olivia t-shirts and a tracksuit. That's awesome. That's cool. I mean, I'm going to pass that along to her because I think that she would love that story. That's cool. Um, let me grab some white here so that I can develop this. Yeah, that's awesome, Hater. That's, that's cool. Yeah, so just to give an update on Olivia, um, so apparently uh, she's doing the radiation right now and she has like 21 treatments total. And she's about, I, I think when I talked to her at New Year, she was like three into it or something like that. Um, so it's progressing. She's got, she's got a little ways to go, but she's, she's, she's doing well. I think that, that was what I was told. She's doing well. So all those, um, you know, sending her your thoughts and, you know, prayers, if you're into that and just, you know, general care and stuff like that. I think that's great. And, um, I know that she appreciates it. Um, I appreciate it. Because I think that, uh, I think she's going to kick it. And I, I think she's going to kick it so hard that, it's, it's you know, it's just going to be like one of those things that, oh, hey, guess what? I used to have cancer and it didn't bother me at all. That That's the type of person that she is. And she's just going to kick its ass. She's going to be like, screw that. But yeah, she's doing well. Thanks, Ida. Yeah, it's getting there. It's it's got a ways to go. Um, you know, sometimes these pictures they they take several hours. There's only so much time I can really devote to it in a uh, a live stream. But it usually comes out okay. <laughs> like I don't want to jinx it. But I think I think this is gonna come out all right. Just you know, it's just going over the same spots. Um, several times until it gets to where you're wanting to be. The problem with colored pencils is that they always take forever. Like that's, I think, I think, um, I think that's why I like some of my more, um, expressive art that I do that, uh, you know, like that coffee painting I did the other, uh, the other day. Yeah. I think I spent maybe two hours on that. And what's cool about that is it, because of the style of the painting, it's meant to like just be more kind of expressive and less on the details, more on style and, and, and so on. And, you know, I think that kind of matches my mood as a, uh, as an artist is, uh, you know, I do want to work on patients. So I do kind of want to work on pictures like this as well. But, you know, being able to get a decent picture done in two hours, that, that's actually kind of cool, too. So. But you, I don't I don't know if I've done a colored pencil picture that had a lot of detail in it that didn't take less than like four hours or something like that. So that's my expectation on this. My expectation on this is that I'll get a decent amount done tonight. Uh, but then tomorrow morning, I'll come back and actually tinker with it some more and put, put in more detail and clean it up a little bit, put in whiskers, that kind of stuff. So it's a process. Because, like, for example, like, you can't really see it on this camera, but this is a little bit rough through here. I might want to smooth this out a little bit, but that's all later stages. So can't really do that yet. So... You know, this is the first time you've asked me about background. You were concerned about the background on the other doggo picture I did. I don't know. Um, Rome, uh, do you have any preference on uh, on backgrounds? I, I was thinking of maybe just doing like a solid color. 
Uh, but if you have a preference, like if you want him in, you know, like a field of flowers or something like I did with um, some of my other dog portraits, you let me know. Right now, I don't really have anything in mind. Uh, just because I know that the background will probably be tomorrow morning, so I'd have to give that some thought. But, I don't know, like, maybe a cloudy sky. Like, in the uh, reference photo, he's he's laying on a blanket, and this is in, like, a room and stuff. So, like, you probably don't want to put in, like, a lot of details from the room or anything like that. Although I could, I can kind of abstract that a little bit. Um, simplify it maybe a little bit. But it, it's kind of up to Rome, so I'll leave it up to him. I like this, um, this doggo's face. I love doing these parts through here on, on a dog. It, it's a lot of fun. Because this is where you can kind of like put in some really simple marks and, go, and it goes a long way uh, to creating the illusion of like a lot of detail. Just putting in like little tiny, like just kind of stipple, really, um, kind of creates that texture and stuff that kind of makes up the uh, the nose. So I know through here there is this pink area. So let me kind of get that in here real quick. Like through here, it's kind of pink. I don't know if it's this darker pink. So I'm gonna have to kind of blend that in over time, but. And you can't really see it on camera, but this area through here is sort of pink. But anyway, lesson for tonight, watercolor and and um, watercolor and colored pencils go really well together as far as like mixed media. Flowers don't matter what kind. All right, cool. All right. So to answer your question, Ida, there's going to be flowers. And they're going to look awesome. Little flowers in here for Rome Dog. Is his name Rome Dog or just Rome? Um, I wasn't sure. Because I know I had like a Facebook uh like page way back in the day for my dog uh, Guinness and I call him Guinness the dog just because Guinness was taken but it is his name's just Guinness oh, he moved when I said that I forgot how old Guinness is I, I think he's up there and he's he's definitely got like white on his face he it's so funny he started off as a completely black dog like like at night if he didn't open his eyes, you wouldn't even see him. That's how black he was. Like there was no black on him at all. I think maybe like a little tiny white patch on his um on his foot, like a little sock or something. But I mean totally black dog. Almost like just a shadow. And now his face is all white, his belly's white. I think it's a good look on him. I mean he looks really good. Oh, eat honeybees. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, the dogs I've had, whenever they eat a honeybee, that was like the last honeybee they ate. But, you know, because like it, it sting them inside the mouth and they'd be like, oh, I don't want that. But definitely my dogs still chase honeybees. They just are a little weary, wary of like when they catch them. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a good look there. Yeah, a tough part about these pictures is they look so undone until they're done. You know, like there's, a, there's definitely a process there where they... They don't look completed for quite some time. It's, it's kind of rough. But you just spend time with it, you know. When I'm not doing live streams, uh, I don't know if I ever talked about this before, but sometimes I enjoy just 
you know, zoning out. Like, um, if I'm not doing live streams where I think I woke up my dog, um, when I'm not doing live streams and I'm just chilling and, and, and doing a picture, you know, whatever, I've got music going, I'm zoned out. I'm thinking about other things. Uh, just kind of like in my own little world and from that standpoint it's kind of it's kind of like this meditative thing it's a, I, I highly recommend it like even if you're not a great artist like you're not really like you don't think you have any skill at drawing or anything like that i i suggest doing this just as like a mental exercise so like um i don't i don't want to say too much about it because i don't really know about the culture but my understanding is that like zen buddhist monks and stuff they spend forever doing the same task over and over again like um there's a documentary i was watching where they had a buddhist monk and they were washing the the that's my cat i don't know if you guys can hear that um the, so the buddhist monk was washing the deck outside of the temple and everything and um you know he's just kind of going over it again and again and again now like obviously you can you can make short work of that you bring out a mop and you just kind of mop up the uh deck or something like that and you're done right but they're intentionally washing it by hand on their uh, like they're on their knees washing it by hand and everything and it's part of their like meditation practice and i always thought that was like so fascinating i'm probably butchering it like i i'm not a buddhist monk so i don't really know what i'm talking about but it, but i kind of get it too i i get how um that can quiet the mind, uh, kind of tone, like you can kind of zone out and just kind of be like at peace, you know, all the benefits that they tell you from meditation, um, it's all right there and just doing the same task over and over again, repeating it and so on. And if nothing else, that's what drawing is. You're going over the same places over and over again until it develops into what you're actually looking for. Um, so Man, that cat's going nuts. Uh, anyway, yeah, so my point, I, I guess my point in all that is, it, like, this is a great way to just, like, kind of, um, you know, work on a nice little mental mental health type thing where you're kind of, like, quieting your mind, meditating, that sort of thing. So meditation through art, that's kind of what I was talking about. Yeah, I, I recommend that. Uh, you know, especially in the new year where you're looking for ways to improve your life and, you know, do things differently in 2024 than maybe what you did in 2023. Um, you know, take up art as a meditation uh, practice. I recommend it. I think it'll work out for you guys. Helps to focus the mind, gets you off of like whatever kind of weird thinking you were thinking about or whatever. Got 567 subscribers from four universities in the UK. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's cool. Sounds like Hater Hater is a real go getter out there. Uh, got um, Olivia some some shirts. Got Ada some subscribers. That's awesome. That cat's going nuts. Like. I think I need to put a cat door in that door there back there. That's funny. All right, so I'm going to kind of darken up this area down here. Again, it really is just kind of going over the same places over and over again. Like in this case, I'm just kind of lightly going over this area, just kind of applying some... Um, some shadow to the base painting that was already there. We're going to kind of do the same up here. Most dogs do kind of have this darker area around the eyes. I, I wouldn't say all dogs, but it, it seems to be a common feature. I should really go and talk to a veterinarian about like all the different part, like all the different features of a dog and, and what makes up their patterns in their fur and stuff. I think that that would be beneficial. That would be kind of fun, actually. It's just kind of go and interview a, a um, like a per like a, or maybe a dog breeder or something like that. Somebody who would know like 
how this stuff works because it is fascinating because a lot of dogs do have similar features you know um a lot of dogs have doppelgangers like two dogs uh can look exactly alike uh i see so my two dogs i see versions of them all over the place it's crazy Building up very nicely. It looks great. Cool. There's like a ridge of shadow coming down through here. It's kind of interesting. So you have like a lot of features down here with details. I, I do need to clean this up. This isn't how it's going to look. But um, then you got some wrinkle features up here in the fur. You know, so I'm just kind of like jumping around and stuff as I see different things. That's kind of how I work. I, I just kind of like develop different areas until I'm like, yeah, this kind of does look like the dog. <laughs> um, I've seen other people who will start in like one corner and just kind of work their way down almost like a, like a scanner. Uh, I've never really worked that way. Uh, I get what they're doing, um, but I don't know. It's just tough for me to work that way. I like to, I like to jump around a bit. So I don't know. Different artists work in different ways. Like, um, one of the things I'd like to do more in 2024 is like more tutorials, you know, like actually sit down and do like, I don't know, like a five, 10 minute tutorial about how to do something, but it's so weird. It's like, just the concept of doing that is so strange to me. Like I've picked up different techniques over the years. Like I, I didn't go to art school. I, I mentioned that a lot. Uh, just kind of like as a disclaimer, like you're not going to learn much here because I never actually went to art school. Um, I'm a self-taught artist. And I, I, I think about how I learned how to draw. And it's not like there was like one mentor or something that I looked at or like even one artist that I followed the career of or something like that, where I, I, I looked at what they did and I, I just copied that. Um, that didn't really, that's not how things went for me. So it's like, it's hard for me to think that other people could learn from copying my, my way of doing things. Um, because I, I do feel like everybody's got their own thing, you know, like, some people, again, start up in the corner and just kind of work their way down. Some people jump around like I do and stuff like that. There's probably some techniques in there that would resonate with different people, but it's hard to tell, you know, like I, I can describe what I do, but it's not like I can recommend you do that. You know what I mean? Hey, Tyler, how's it going? Are dogs my favorite things to draw? Um... I don't know if they're my favorite things. I would, so I would, I would, con I would call it my most rewarding thing. Uh, so like I, I talked about that a little bit earlier. It's like, especially when I'm drawing, um, a, a dog that passed away, or I'm doing um, a a dog that somebody really like. It's a, it's somebody's best friend. You know, I like doing work that people have an emotional attachment to. So like. In fact, it's a little bit selfish. It's like when I'm working on a dog, I feel like I feel like it, it. It's almost like a lot of the burden I have in making somebody resonate with this picture is a uh, is already done. You know, like I don't have to like Rome for uh, you know, like I'm going to talk like Rome's not in here. Um, I don't have to do that much work to get Rome connected with this dog. I just have to make this look like his dog. And then he's already going to be connected to this dog because it's his dog. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not making a lot of sense here, but that's okay. Um, part of the burden of an artist is getting people to connect with their work. If it's, if it's a, if it's some, if I'm drawing something that somebody's already connected to, half that work's already done. So part of that is that, yeah, it's a dog. Um, I love dogs. I love the look of dogs. I, I, I enjoy drawing dogs. Um, but the other part of it is that I like drawing work that people connect to, right? So, like, I can extend that to other things, I, I think is what my point is. It, it's, like, not just draw dogs at that point. It's, like, there's other things. So, like, if I'm drawing a portrait 
of uh, like a family loved one or something like that. I enjoy doing that as well. Um, so it's hard to say that I just, uh, the dogs are my favorite thing to draw. I like it. It's more a category of uh, things that people connect to. And that that's really what I meant to. There you go. <laughs> I'm not making a lot of sense tonight. <laughs> Sometimes that don't make sense. I, I, I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. Just cleaning up the nose here a little bit because I noticed there's like a little bit of a disconnect here on what I painted and what it actually looks like. I got to put some texture into this nose as well. I do, I do really enjoy drawing dogs. Um, but I think, I think it's more so that I just enjoy drawing things that people connect with. And it's almost a little bit um, cheating to draw something that somebody's already pre-connected to. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I enjoy drawing architecture, like buildings and stuff like that. So if I drew a building, it's really hard to get somebody to connect with that building. You know, it's like, why do I care about this building that this guy drew? And um, I, I feel like that's some of the benefit of doing pet portraits is that people are pre-connected to them. If that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense, Jeremy. Well, thank you, Jeremy. I do like answering my own questions. Yeah, the deeper the meaning, the better and more meaningful it feels to draw, right? Yeah, exactly. So I want to do drawings that have, uh, that are meaningful to people, right? And if somebody's already has this connection to the dog, then half that job's already done. Um, now, will a lot of people connect to this dog? Probably. It's a pretty dog. Um, but again, talking like Rome's not here, which of course Rome is. Uh, also, Rome is already pre-connected to this dog, so it, it takes a lot of that burden off. Like, I could draw my own dogs, um, but... People wouldn't have the same sort of connection to my dogs as they would to their own dog, if that makes sense. Um, it, it's one of those uh, it's one of those challenges as an artist. Like, what do you work on? What do you what what subject matter do you cover and stuff? And I, I, I to be honest with you, I don't really know. I'm not there yet. I haven't solved those problems. Like, I don't know what I like to create. Really, um, I'm I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. Um, but um, it, it does help that it, it does help to do like pet portraits where somebody's already connected to them, if that makes sense. So anyway, I like this dog. How's that? Not, how's that count? Like, how's that count? How's, yeah, does that count? There you go. <laughs> Well, you know, like you're, you're still getting started, Ida. It, it's fine. It, look, um, it's been a while since I was your age, but when I was your age, I was drawing ninjas and, uh, you know, like uh, a lot of cartoon characters, a lot of comic book characters. Um, you know, you draw what, what, like, you know, you're, you're into at the time and stuff. I, I assume that you watch a lot of cartoons. Um, I know I used to. Um, I'd still do actually. Like when I told you to draw the uh, the dog from uh, Adventure Time, um, it's because I watch Adventure Time. I, I really enjoy that show, and I, I watch some anime, and I watch The Simpsons, and I watch SpongeBob, and all that that stuff. So I, I know some of these uh, these things that you draw. When when I got started drawing pictures, um, yeah, I mean that's what I, I'm I'm probably super good at drawing Bart Simpson still, even though I haven't drawn Bart Simpson in forever, just because I used to draw Bart Simpson all the time. Uh, like, that's actually my, that's probably my preferred way of uh, doing cartoons. Like, let's see if I can draw Bart Simpson from scratch. Let's see, yeah, got the eyes, got the, you know, what's, I don't, I don't remember if Bart Simpson has the uh, eyelids, but he's got this nose, He's got this mouth that kind of comes down. He's got the smile. He's got 
this little circle up here, and then he's got the spiky hair. And then that kind of comes down, and then he's got kind of like this ear. So yeah, I used to draw Bart Simpson all the time. Um, so if I'm drawing a cartoon character, I'm, I'm drawing Bart Simpson. Uh, there's no shame in that, is what I'm getting at. It's like we all do. And then eventually you just kind of want to expand out and draw in more things, you know? And, um, you know, you, you get a dog, for example, and you're like, oh, you know, I love that dog. I want to draw that dog. And then you learn how to draw a dog. So I guess long story short is you're going to end up drawing more things than you currently draw. It's just where you're at right now. We're all somewhere, you know? We, we, we make progress over time. Yeah, especially Bart Simpson. I mean, I love Bart Simpson. There, there's no shame in drawing Bart Simpson. There really isn't. Like, Bart Simpson's awesome. I'm surprised that show's still on the air. It's been on the air since as far back as I can remember. The day they canceled Bart's, uh, the, the day they canceled The Simpsons, we should all collectively just kind of like, oh no, is the world coming to an end? Um, because that show has been on forever. <laughs> So, in fact, there's there's some things that um, I can just completely draw from memory without any kind of, like, reference picture or anything like that. One of them is Bart Simpson. The other one is Batman, uh, because I used to draw I used to draw Batman a lot. And I, I don't mean just, like, a little sketch of Batman. I'm talking about full body, in a pose, doing some kind of, like, you know, thing with this cape and everything. I can, I can draw Batman completely from memory without looking at any reference pictures just because I've drawn a million Batmans over the course of my life. And uh, same thing with ninjas. I, I had a big thing for ninjas. I would draw not, not even like the turtle ninjas, but like maybe like ninjas from like G.I. Joe comics or something like that from back in the day. You, you're too young to even know what G.I. Joe is. But um, yeah, that was my thing. I used to draw a lot of those in school. We all do, you know. Hey, Marble, how's it going? Yeah, we're uh, we're drawing Rome Dog tonight. Um, uh, Rome's in the chat, and we're drawing this beautiful carrier. I I hope it's beautiful. I hope my picture is beautiful, but it's a process. It, it's it's taking a little while, but we'll we'll get there. I think I think we're starting to get some of the details in the face, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think. Probably I'll have to finish it up tomorrow because we are at like an hour and 40 minutes and I got ways to go, but I'm liking it. I'm happy with the progress. I think, um, I think most pictures cannot, can be saved. Um, but some pictures like you can tell from the beginning that they're going to turn out great. And I think this is one of those, you know, I think, I think it's uh, progressing pretty nicely. Some pictures, they take a lot of reworking to get them to the to be exactly what you want. I, I don't think it's going to take a lot of reworking on this one. I think I'm pretty happy with the progress. But there is a, like a lot of details. Got to kind of get the fur in around the nose, uh, leading into the nose. Got to, you know, work on the body. Got to work on the background, for example. We got a ways to go, but it's fun. It's a it's a process. Do a bunch of cartoon rooms. I so that's uh, that's something I don't do a lot is uh, drawing cartoons, but I love drawing cartoons. I, I'll be honest with you. What I'm working on these days is I want I want to be a fine artist, right? I want to be um, the type of artist that could possibly. Uh, show work in a gallery or something like that, even though I may never actually do that. I want to be that kind of artist. I want to be the kind of artist where I paint something or draw something that ends up on somebody's wall or something like that. If I didn't have that as a goal for myself, I would be drawing car cartoons and comics, to be honest with you. I love gra uh, graphic novels. Uh, you know, I love anime. I, I don't watch a ton of anime, but... Um, you know, I do enjoy that. I, I enjoy that kind of art. I would love to be doing comic books. Um, but right now, I'm, I'm trying to uh, to be the kind of artist that, like, you know, might end up on a gallery or something like that, even if that never happens. 
it's it's the goal I have set for myself. So I'm working on that goal more than I'm working on uh, any particular um, kind of art or anything like that. If that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. Let me rephrase that. I'm working on a goal. I'm not working on my art style. There you go. The goal is to create things that I see at art shows. I you know um, things that people would want uh, hanging on the wall, that kind of thing. A pet portrait, definitely. People would want that hanging on their wall. A uh, picture of Batman, I don't know if anybody would want that hanging on their wall. If they did, I'll, I'll draw it. It's just, you know. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. I'm trying to, I'm trying to develop my skill at doing wall art. It's pretty sad when you put it that way, but that, that's what I'm working on. Maybe, maybe I'll change that up at some point. Maybe I'll, um, you know, like there's, there's a lot of different kind of art you can create. Maybe, maybe I'll start working on art that somebody would want on a t-shirt at some point. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But right now I'm trying to work on art that somebody would hang up on their wall. Jeremy, balancing my responsibilities as a cryptographer can be mind-boggling at times, but always make time for your and Ida streams, both of you guys. Uh, live streams provide a much-needed escape. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's a hell of a compliment. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I still don't know why people watch this show, to be honest with you. Um... Some people say that they come in here to learn things. I don't know how that happens. Uh, some people, the, the the most the most honest one that I like, I mean, of course, all of these are honest, but the one I like the most um, because I feel like that person is definitely telling the truth is um, somebody told me that they they watch my show so that they can fall asleep, and I love that. You know, and and they said it's because I had a soothing voice that just puts them straight to sleep. And I'm like, that's awesome. I love that. That you can get some sleep by watching my show. That makes that's that's the type of personal reward <laughs> that I like. If I can put you to sleep, I've done my job. Because I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I watch people's shows just to fall asleep. You know, there's no shame in that. You're watching something where it's nice and relaxing and, you know, um, person's got like maybe a, a nice soft melodic voice or something like that, which I don't feel like I do. I, I feel like I have this nasally voice. I don't know how somebody can sleep what, uh, by listening to me, but hey, I'll take it as a compliment. But yeah, the, uh, if you do find this relaxing, that's actually something that I is intentional. I want I want you guys to relax and have a good time and just chill out. And um, you know, it's one, kind of one of the reasons why I did this on Friday nights. Um, it's supposed to be like you know, you worked hard during the week. Uh, you got stresses at your job or something. Take a break. Take a break. Enjoy some art. You know, I even as I said, take a break. I, I took a deep breath. Take a break. Enjoy some art, relax, you know, whatever you did this week, I'm sure it was stressful. Let that go, let that go. Let that go and enjoy some art. And I mean, my ultimate goal is I, I would hope to, to inspire people to like create their own art. And like I said, you don't have to be great at it or whatever, just treat it as a mental relaxation exercise, you know? I'm relaxed drawing this picture. Even if you're not, you know, there on the skill level yet. I, I feel like I have a ways to go myself, but even if you're not happy with your work or anything like that, it doesn't matter. It's you're doodling, you're, you're drawing a picture. Even if you're doing a stick figure, you know, you can, you know, you can start with a, a stick figure. So this would be a fun exercise for people and just start with a stick figure and then you're like, huh, well, that's not really what people look like. So you kind of build a torso, you know, and then you kind of build a waist and then you're like, okay, well maybe, maybe they have like actual legs, you know, kind of like my little stick man over here, you know, and then you're like, 
all right, well, that's kind of cool. Now, like, let's pose it. Let's have his arm up here and so, and so on. And you kind of just build up on that and stuff like that. that that's a great exercise if, if you're not comfortable with your drawing skills. Um, you do that for a while, and guess what? You'll be drawing comic books. Because that's all really comic books is. It's just taking basic figures and putting them in different poses and stuff and then adding some dialogue and the story to it, you know? Honestly, um, Ida's streams are fun for me because, like, it, it's kind of cool to see that all the different things that she does on request. Like, somebody can request some kind of random thing. Like, um, I think I threw her for a loop by saying, do Jake from uh, uh, Adventure Times because I suspect you don't actually watch uh, Adventure Time. So you probably had to look that up. But you can you can just mention any kind of uh, comic book character or cartoon or something like that and she'll she'll give it a shot i think that's kind of cool like if i was doing requests like on demand like that i think i would struggle because i would have to figure out well how am i supposed to look this up and you know do this for the person and make it look realistic when i'm not familiar with that character i i i i have a lot of admiration for that kind of stuff where you where you do things on the spot to me i, I would be like oh too much pressure <laughs> i can't do it I find that impressive. But as far as like, I don't know, just taking a load off and stuff like that, I, I really do think that it, it's a learned skill. Anybody can do it. And, you know, you guys might not think that I'm really in the position to say it's easy. But I really do feel like it's easy. You see what I'm doing here. I'm just going over and over the same areas, a bunch of different times, creating layers, adding more detail as I go. That's all there is to it. You're just basically doing the same drawing over and it's just like that Buddhist monk who's washing the deck, you know? He's just washing the same place he already washed over and over again, Zen meditation. That's all it is. And then one day you look at your picture and you're like, holy crap, I actually created a dog here. That's cool. I brought that dog to it into existence. To me, that's my art philosophy, at least. I, I don't know if it's exactly true, but that's what I'm sticking to. That's my story, is that you just do the same things over and over again. I'm petting my dog while drawing. That's how easy it is. I'm drawing and petting my dog at the same time. But, you know... If you're not doing a live stream, it's even easier. You know, you're just, uh, you're listening to your music, you're relaxing, you're chilling. You Maybe you're watching a movie while you're doing it, and you're like half watching the movie, half watching your drawing. I I recommend this to everybody. I really do. Whether you, you consider yourself an artist or not, it, it's a great way to unwind and just kind of like develop peace of mind and, and all that stuff because like there is plenty to stress about in the world this is a great way to escape from all that it, it is escapism like somebody said escape up there earlier i i completely agree with that it's 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 hard to say that when you've been drinking it, it's escapism there you go that's to me yes it's so anyway Yeah, one day I'll, I'll come and visit um, Lyndon. That'd be awesome. Thanks, Nomadic Madman. I've always liked your name, by the way. Nomadic Madman. Like, if you're going to be a nomadic, you should be a madman. Uh, one, one of these days, you're going to have to tell me the story behind that, that handle. I love it. Yeah, I didn't. And yeah, watch movies while you draw. You know, maybe draw what you see on screen. Uh, the other thing I, I'd like to do, which, uh, you know, I'm always talking about it, and I, I'm, I'm never quite where I want to be. I want to get faster at, at doing pictures. So I would love to be watching, a um, like, a movie and maybe not put as much detail into uh, the picture as what I'm doing here or most of the time. But I would like to, um, I would like to draw what I'm seeing on screen, right? So, like, if uh, 
if, if a particular actor or, or or something is on the screen, maybe I'll do a portrait or maybe I'll do a scene or something. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have a lot of detail. But if I can capture that moment while it's happening, maybe I'll do that as an exercise sometime. Like look up a... Uh, so like I can probably do a quick sketch of something in like 15, 20 minutes or something like that. Maybe I'll look up a scene in a movie that's about 15 minutes long where they don't change scenes like they're in the same environment for 15 minutes and then just try to like actually capture that. That would be kind of cool as an exercise. Um, the other thing I should mention is that as a self-taught artist, I give myself challenges like that. So like I actually pick out things that I think would be difficult for me. I, I think that that's a great way to progress as an artist. Sorry about all the noise back there. The dogs are awake and they're like, time to make a bunch of noise. They get jealous sometimes that I'm drawing another dog. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, well, yeah. So you're watching the Hunger Games. And I don't think there's any scenes in Hunger Games that last like 15 minutes. But say you're drawing um, Katniss while watching Hunger Games. That would be kind of cool. And, um, you know, like you may not be able to get a lot of detail into Katniss while drawing. But you can, you can draw a basic female figure with a bow and arrow. Uh, you can do that. And even if you're doing it like cartoon style or like stick figure style or something, it's a great it's a great way to just unwind, you know, and practice your skills and like relax, dog. Hey, go lay down. This dog's super jealous that I'm drawing some other dog. And this is bear, by the way. Most of you guys know bear, but. Well, we're coming up on like two hours, so I should probably kind of like end this at some point uh, in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, but I, I am going to continue working on it, Rome. I'm not I'm not going to call it done done. But uh, when my dogs start getting antsy, that, that lets me know that they probably want to go out and things like that. But I think it's coming along pretty well. Like we're, we're starting to develop some uh, some depth in here. Um, I guess if there's like a secret sauce all of this it, it's really just like you know you get the basic shapes down and then you start refining those shapes into smaller shapes you start working on like tonal shadows and you know values of that nature um like underneath here there's some areas that are like darker than others right now it's kind of like just one tone I, I need to develop that a little bit and then also there's like little highlights that kind of poke through up here so at some point i'll get to that it's just a repeated process. You just keep doing it over and over again. Hey, while you guys are here, what did you guys think of my uh, my coffee uh, painting that I did the other day? Because I've been getting some good feedback on that, and I think I'm going to do more of those. So, like, is that something that you guys would want to watch? I do that kind of on the side. Like, if I just spent the next 10 pictures doing coffee paintings, like, are you guys going to find that boring? Or do you think that that would be interesting? I want to make sure that, like, as I'm progressing as an artist, I'm still entertaining you guys. So I'm still doing this kind of stuff that you guys enjoy uh, to watch or, or something like that. We both end, uh, live independently and have our own separate living rooms. Well, Jeremy specializes in working with software, I reckon. Yeah, uh, so uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I've mentioned it on this channel before. Uh, I am a software developer by trade. That's what I do, like, you know, for money and stuff like that. Um, this art thing is uh, it's definitely something that I've been working on. Now the dog's eating. The dog is so annoying. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, so... The art thing is something I do as a hobby, something I'm trying to learn, things like that. But I do software development. I'm a C Sharp uh, developer working in like .NET technology. So that's kind of like where I live. Um, most of my, the software that I create is for like content management, publishing, things like that. Um, I'm a freelance software developer. So like basically it's like whatever the client needs, which is usually like website type of things and databases for websites and web applications, things like that. Um, you know, it, it's nothing like curing cancer or anything. It's nothing that really noteworthy, but it, it's what I, uh, it's what I do. And uh, 
I like to think I'm pretty good at it. Uh, there's probably room for improvement there as well, but I've been doing that for a lot longer than I've been drawing pictures. So, um, the thing about software development is it is pretty routine. It is pretty cerebral, cerebral. <laughs> it is pretty cerebral. There you go. <laughs> um, and that's one of the reasons why I turned to art is a uh, kind of like a way to unwind from that. So like I spend a lot of time doing analytical things during the week. So this is kind of like my dessert is, um, uh, you know, I do a lot of problem solving during the week and then, you know, on the, in the evenings and on the weekends and stuff, I, I draw pictures just to develop my creative side, which, you know, there's some creative side in um, software development as well. You know, you, you are problem solving. That's creative. You are sometimes doing graphics work, graphic work. Um, so there is some crossover, but nothing like this. Like mostly it's like writing code or something like that. And you're not, you're not being creative at the level that, that I'm trying to be here. So anyway, that's the thing. I do like to have this picture turning out. I just know, I, like I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I got a ways to go. A lot of details in this face. Um, my average, I think, for doing pet portraits and colored pencil is about four hours. So I'm, I'm halfway there in, in my view. Yeah, so like I, I've dabbled in Python. It's not what I do most of my stuff in. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, so about the coffee painting, I totally forgot I asked about that. Yeah, okay, so you guys enjoyed the uh, coffee painting. All right, so if I did more coffee paintings on this show, that wouldn't annoy you guys. You guys wouldn't be like, oh, geez, he's doing another coffee painting. I'm going to tune out on this one. Um, that's reassuring, because, like, I thought I, I thought the style was kind of cool, and it I, I like how it turned out, and I just want to kind of practice with that medium a little bit more just because it's kind of cool, you know. Uh, I, I want to see like how far I can take it, like what other things I can do with a coffee painting. I'm still in the Fucking dog. Anything that falls on the floor, the dog wants to eat, even if it's a tube of paint. That's not good. <laughs> I did t double check to make sure that all my paints were like uh, non-toxic in case the dog did eat them, but still, I don't want the dog eating paint. Um. Oh yeah. So back to the Python thing. I I've dabbled in Python. What I find. Uh, as a software developer, it's like, if you go and get a job, you're basically having to conform to whatever the rest of the team is uh, doing. And uh, if you stay at that job for any extended period of time, you're basically becoming that kind of a developer. So um, the place that I worked at for a while was uh, definitely a .NET shop. So I'm, I'm .NET wh whether I want to or not. Uh, I do like to uh, broaden my horizons and, and try different things. So I have dabbled in like Python and, you know, uh, Java, things like that. Um, but for the most part, I'm just so used to using C sharp that like as a go-to, like whenever I have a project left to my own devices, I'm probably going to do C sharp. Um, but you know, as a freelance developer, sometimes I get like, a, I don't know, somebody wants a WordPress site or something like that. And then I have to like, Oh, I got to slum it in PHP tonight. Um, it's just the nature of the beast, but left to my own devices, if I, if I had my choice, I would probably be doing C sharp. Yeah. And so what I like about the coffee, uh, painting, uh, Ida is that like you, you really get to create movement in the picture. Like, um, I, I made a point to show that like, you know, if you like bring it up, it creates these droplets that come down and stuff like that. Uh, I like that. I, I like that you're, um, using gravity, for example, and then you just flick your paintbrush and there's splats all over the place. I love that aspect of it. It's, it just feels like chaos and, um, you know, kind of like ordered chaos because you're taking the chaos and you're making something ordered out of it. You're making a picture out of it. And if you look at any of my other art, um, it, it's the same thing that I enjoy doing with charcoal, uh, with pastel. This is a little less chaotic. You know, I'm more meticulous here uh, just because I really want to do a good job on Rome's picture. Um, but left to my own devices, I'm going to create chaos and mess on the uh, paper, and then I'm going to try to create order out of it. Um, that that's my uh, that's my artistic uh, 
point of view, I guess. I wouldn't call it a style because it differs depending on like what kind of medium I'm working in, but it's definitely my point of view. Um, left to my own devices, I will create a mess on a piece of paper and then try to find a face in it or try to find a dog in it or try to find, um, you know, whatever. Ordered chaos, I guess. Built uh, 12 inch floppy drives at Intel in 1978. Cool, 12 inch floppy drives, geez. I remember the old, uh, what was it, four and a quarter? I've never seen a 12 inch floppy drive in my life. That's that's awesome. Uh, I'm definitely old enough to have used many 3.5 inch floppy drives, but the uh, four and a quarter were like, kind of like, I don't know, maybe my dad's um, time period. Uh, I'm not that old. Well, as a kid, I, I was in computer club as a kid, and we played Monty Zimmer's Revenge on the old uh, four and a quarter. I love that game, Monty Zimmer's Revenge. <laughs> There's kids in this room that have no idea what I'm talking about. Look it up. Monty Zimmer's Revenge was a fun Atari type kind, kind of game back in the day. Yes, uh, Ida, uh, totally like watercolor. Now, there are, there are some differences. Um, watercolor is going to be a lot more fluid um the coffee you're basically treating it like watercolor but it's going to be a it's a little bit different you have to really try hard to uh balance the amount of water that's in it um and, and the reason why is because watercolor is designed to be used as paint uh coffee is not right so like the watercolor you're definitely going to get that kind of pigment out of it that you're wanting to get like if you want to use blue you're definitely going to get blue out of watercolor blue um with um with coffee you're going to get really light browns and the only way you're going to get your dark browns is if you try to you know go over it several times and you just got to be aware of that and um it works just like watercolor otherwise, but you're definitely going over it more times than you may with uh, with watercolor. And then um, the other thing is if you do really want dark colors, you're basically creating a syrup of coffee. And um, the more I play, I play with it, I, I think I will do more tutorials on it because I'm fascinated by coffee <laughs> as, a, as an art medium. I, I just love it. It's just so cool. And then you get to drink your work afterwards. So like you end up with a... Uh, um, you know, like here, this is left over from doing the background watercolor thing. Guess what? It's it's coffee, so you get to drink that when you're done. I'm just joking. You shouldn't do that, but but you could. And um, I, I just think it's fascinating. I really do. I, I think it's great. So I, I'm gonna play with this some more. I've done a couple of uh, coffee paintings in in the past, but I really like how that horse turned out. And I, now I'm I'm itching to think like, well, you know, if I did an elephant in coffee would that turn out just as well if i did a castle in in coffee would that turn out well so i i kind of want to like challenge myself see what else i can do with coffee see see how that goes then of course i just like coffee anyway i drink a lot of coffee um i might try some other things too like i don't know like wine or something like that see how that goes but so a lot of white down here in the fur, so this, this kind of looks washed out. That's because I'm going to come back and add some white there to kind of dress that up, just to let you know. I think we're getting there, but again, I do think that there's like a lot more work left to do on this. So we're kind of playing it by ear. I don't feel, I, I don't want to be rushed on this. I, I want to take my time with it, so even though it doesn't make for a great live stream because I like live streams where the picture's done at the end of it. It is what it is, you know. Yeah, I think a castle and coffee would be cool. Um, and the reason I say that is like, like most people know who J.R. Tolkien is, but like J.R. Tolkien actually did art as well. Not He didn't just write, um, you know, like, the Hobbit books and Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. He did artwork that went along with it. And I like that style of art. And I think that anything that J.R. Tolkien did would look cool in coffee. 
So that's everything from castles to like fantasy creatures and and like um you know knights and and rangers and with uh bows and arrows and stuff. I want to try all that. I think it would look cool. Like little hobbit homes. I think that would look cool. I don't know. I, I just like the medium and I just kind of want to explore it more. And that's kind of like what you do as an artist. You know, you, you, you pick something that you, you put things out there. So, yeah. All right. So here's an observation uh, from dabbling in, in being an artist, because like it, it's really hard for me to say I'm an artist because I'm just having fun. And, and you know, it, it, it's hard for me to to own that and say, like, yeah, I'm an artist. But it, because I know what other artists do, and I'm just so fascinated by their work, it's hard for me to say that I'm an artist. But one observation I made over the last year of doing this is that it really is like you do something, you try something, you put it out there in the world, and you just see how it goes. You know, you see if it connects with people. And, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. I've done some really bad art on this uh, channel. And it doesn't connect with people like, you know, you can see it in the analytics, like people just don't care. And, and I think that's fine. I think that's part of the journey. But then sometimes you put something out there that people do connect to. And there's been a couple of things that I've done that people have connected to. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. How far can I take that? Like, where can I go with that? Like, do people want to see more of that, you know? And, um... You know, like, I, I I just find that the uh, the coffee thing is pretty cool, and I just want to explore it more, if that makes sense. From that standpoint, you know, like, uh, I did that piece, people connected with it, I've gotten some good feedback on it, and it's like, oh, okay, well, if they like that, what else can I do with it? You know, that sort of thing. You never really know. You just put things out in the world and see what connects with people. Uh, I probably wouldn't be doing pet portraits if that didn't connect with people, but it does, and I'm happy to do them, and I enjoy doing them, so I'm going to keep doing those. Oh, thanks. I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, it, it's tough. Like, when when you talk about art, um, you know, everybody's got kind of their heroes, uh, and I judge my work by my heroes, the people I look up to, and and, you know, it, it falls short. <laughs> so it, it, it's tough to call yourself in. It, it's tough to put yourself in the same league as your heroes, you know? And and by heroes, I mean, I enjoy going to art museums, like from uh, uh, real painters, for example, uh, people who are really good at what they do, um, alive and dead. So like I'm talking about, you know, famous painters and stuff like that. And it's not fair to judge myself against their work but I do, and I go to these um, I go to these museums, and I see these beautiful masterpieces, and I'm like, oh, my shit sucks. <laughs> it's not the way you're supposed to think, but it is the way that I think about it, and you know, it's something I work on. Um, I don't think anybody should judge their stuff against masters. That's just not the right way to go. But it, it is, it is something that crosses your mind, and and it's. It's the only way you really progress, you know, like if, if you're, if you're satisfied with your work, you're never going to create any more. So I, I don't see it necessarily a bad thing, as long as you're doing it in a healthy way, which I, I do. Like, I, I don't, I don't obsess over how, how bad my art is or anything like that. I, all I, do, but I do, I do realistically look at it as like, oh, okay, here's areas of improvement. Here's things that I can do to make it better and so on. And I work on those things. And I think that's a healthy way to look at it. I, I really do. So I, I don't, I don't look at it as like, well, it's not, it's not terrible. It's, it's better than what I was doing a year ago. Hey kid. Um, Jeremy on asking why folks are here. I didn't know you had an art channel until Mama Q uh, put it in the link on Ben's streams a year ago. Uh, but I do remember reading your Chase comments on Dow blog for years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, um, that that's cool. Like, I, I'm happy however people get here, you know. That, that's cool. Um, but, yeah, I used to, yeah, I used to, um, I used to do, like, a lot of that blogging. And it was fun, you know. Honestly, a lot of those blogs came from, like, pushing the limits of what people could know. And um, most of those blog posts were about, um, you know, like 
when, when you're doing something like treasure hunting or, or something like that, or solving any kind of mystery, there is a question of like, well, how much can you figure out? And some of that stuff uh, was about, you know, me pushing limits there where it's like, Hey, you know what? I think, I think maybe we can figure something out here. And I, I've always been fascinated by that kind of stuff, you know? Like what's the what's the limits of like what you can do like whether it's art or figuring out mysteries or you know things like that it's like what what, what is the limit here and pushing that boundary and, and to be honest with you whether it's art or mysteries or whatever it is I've always found that the limit is not what you think it is it, the you can push that boundary and create a new limit and you know you'd be surprised at how far you can go if if that makes sense maybe that doesn't make sense I don't know. Uh, do you look at your channel as, uh, let's see, sorry, I've gotten to know uh, Jeremy through Ida's live stream as well as your kid. Yeah, yeah. And um, do you look at your channel as doing art for your channel or doing art and then upload it to your channel just for fun? Uh, that's a great question. And I think the answer to that probably depends on <laughs> like what day of the week it is. Because uh, I started the I started the art channel as a way to uh, help myself. Right. So like I do see a benefit in um in kind of vlogging what you're doing. I, I think it it's a way like um I mentioned earlier in the show, it's so great that I started my channel in January of twenty twenty three because now it's January of twenty twenty four and I get to look back at twenty twenty three and see what a year makes, right? So I can compare how I'm drawing now against how I was drawing a year ago. And, and and see that progress. I love that aspect of it. So from that standpoint, it's purely self-interest. So like I started the channel out of self-interest and to, to a large part, it is still self-interest. I, I still do it for myself, right? Um, but then also over the year, I've noticed that people come in and I've, I've made friends through here and I, I've connected with some of you guys and, and I love that aspect of it as well. So then it becomes well, it's not just self-interest, it's also a community, right? Which I think is great. I, um, I, I've met people through here um, that I've connected with that, you know, I probably would have never met uh, otherwise. And I love that aspect of it. I hear stories from you guys. I get movie recommendations. Um, I dare say maybe we're friends. And I love that aspect of it. Uh, so that's not selfish. That's beyond selfish. That, that, that's more community. Um, so there's that aspect of it. And then I get some people in here that, you know, they're like, wow, how'd you do that? And then I get to be like, wow, okay. Um, I'm still learning, but maybe there's a bit of a mentorship thing going on. And I love that aspect of it as well. It's like, what can I give back to people? Um, which is an unexpected thing. I, I never expected people to actually want to hear my point of view on things, which is really amazing to me. Uh, that's something that I, I didn't expect. There's no reason to, um, you know, feel like you deserve that or anything like that. Uh, that's just an added bonus. So like, if I can help somebody else learn how to draw or, you know, develop some, some, some sort of point of view on things that, uh, is positive, that that's definitely personally enjoyable. Uh, I, I like that aspect of it. So it's kind of like a ma multifaceted answer. Um, that, uh, you know, like I, I reserve the right to change my opinion on it later. Uh, but right now that's how I feel about it. Um, I definitely started off, um, like just doing as, as journaling almost like vlogging. Um, but then, you know, some other things have come out of it that I think are awesome. And, uh, that's all you guys, you know, you guys have brought something to it that I couldn't just bring on my own. And I appreciate that. Um, I try to express it every now and then, uh, but I always forget to that, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. You know, you guys keep me wanting to do this. Yeah, th that's a good, good way to put it. So I started the channel more for myself, you know, just to kind of vlog my progress as I develop my art skills. Um, but then it's become a bit of a community and uh, that's, that is awesome. Uh, you can call it fans if you want, but I, I think it's more like we're fans of each other. Um, uh, I don't think people come in here just to listen to me and show that kind of fandom. I think it's more that you guys in, enjoy talking to each other as well. So it's more of a community in my mind. 
Uh, it's not just about me. But that's the way I see it. I don't know. Maybe you guys see it differently and stuff. Um, I'm not here to, like, tell you what to think. <laughs> but I don't know. I think you could take me out of the equation and you guys would probably still hang out with each other. So from that aspect, it's more of a community. Like, it, it'd be kind of weird if, if it was just, like, a video like a blank video like maybe just like a black wall or something like that and you guys were just chatting amongst yourselves but i think you guys would still do that like I, I think you guys enjoy hanging out with each other as much as you like hanging out with me which is totally cool hey paul it's all on your shorts uh look at the channel emailed you right after you may have actually sent me so like i am terrible with emails so like you may have actually sent me this uh this picture to draw beforehand and i i just you know lost it or something like that um emails are uh, always tough for me i always i always like answer them like late and you know things like that and um the offer is out there if anybody wants me to draw something feel free to send it to me i'll try to get around to it i may not get to it right away but I will eventually get to it. And, um, you know, Rome, I was always planning on doing a picture for you because like, uh, I think you're a solid dude and, you know, you've supported hanging out in this channel. Um, you've, you're like one of the first people who've been hanging out in this channel. So like, I, I always want to pay that back, you know, like if you're a long time, uh, viewer in here, like you're a subscriber, you've been around for a while. I just enjoy drawing pictures. I don't care what I draw. So like, let me know what you want me to draw and I'll probably get around to it eventually. In this case, this is a special one because like Rome did pass away. So I, I want to do this one for that reason, but I probably would have got around to drawing Rome anyway at some point. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Hater. I appreciate that. You guys are so nice to me. You really are. Like, I love that. Um, you guys have great things to say and stuff. I don't feel the way you do, but I appreciate you guys saying it. You guys are very nice. Um, when I look at a picture like this, all I, do, I see is flaws. Uh, I would argue that that's how you're supposed to look at pictures that you do. Uh, like you are supposed to admire other people's pictures, but you're not supposed to admire your own. Um, it's one of the uh, the paradoxes of being an artist. You're supposed to look at your picture and be cr critical of it. Um, that's why I say I don't try to uh, make opinions about my own artwork. I do. Don't get me wrong. I'll be like, oh, man, this looks awesome. Um, but I try not to be in the habit of that because I really do think it's in the eye of the beholder. Um, and the reason for that. Yeah, I, I do believe this. This is true. Um, I believe that if I'm not critical of this picture, it's not going to improve, right? So, like, even at this stage, it's not done. I, I have to finish it. If I'm not critically looking at it, then it's never going to get done well. Um, so, I can't look at this picture and say that it's nice. It, it's just not my job to do that. Uh, you guys can look at it and, and say it's nice or not. That's up to you. Um, you can look at it and say it sucks and i might actually agree with you uh depending on what stage it's at um but i can't look at it and say it's nice uh because like then then i'm not going to make the improvements that are needed to finish it if that makes sense yeah i agree with that yeah hey moon how's it going man Yeah, Rome, I, I, honestly, I, I wanted to make sure, like, I, I had a couple of options on things that I could do tonight, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to I'm gonna do this picture, just because it, it's such a beautiful dog. You, you have such a beautiful dog here. Certainly that helps, you know, like I said, um, I had, I, we were joking earlier about whether or not there's, uh, there actually are ugly dogs. I, I've never met one, to be honest with you. Well, that's not true. I, I, I can't think of it in my head, but I can see it in my head. Um, I, I can't like think how to describe it, but I can see an ugly dog in my head. I know they exist, but this is definitely not one of them. So it helps that it's a beautiful dog. It, it's, it's easier to draw. And, and that's the same with people. It, it, it's hard for me to draw. Like, um, I don't, I don't think there really are ugly people. There's just and like, there's easier to draw people and there's not easier to draw people. So it, it helps when they're, um, they're easy to draw and, 
and certainly all the all the dogs that I've had to draw um, so far, they, they've all been easy for me because they're they're pretty dogs. This is a pretty dog. I like this dog. Is your email in your... Yeah, so like, um, yeah, uh, my email is on the about... Oh, I think they got rid of the about page. Uh, it should be in the description. If it's not, let me know and I'll put it out there. Uh, just leave a comment below. I'll, I'll put my email in there. I don't care. Um, but yeah, reach out to me if you want a picture done. Um, you know, like... Again, I'll get around to it. I don't know when I'll get to it. There are some pictures that I do just because I'm trying to challenge myself. Um, and like I'm, I'm, I've got a specific goal in mind when I take on a picture. Um, but certainly, like, you know, I do these live streams twice a week, and uh, you know, often uh, I during the afternoon I'm like, man, what am I even going to draw tonight? So I do appreciate you guys sending me things. Um, it, it's kind of inspiration that's helpful to me. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you can't find my email address, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll get it out to you, but it should be in my about section description, whatever. I know that they changed some things around on the YouTube page, so it may not be on the about page. I think they got rid of that. Um, other places you can reach out to me is, you know, like I'm on Instagram, feel free to send me like a direct message. Um, trying to think does, YouTube have like a direct message kind of thing? If not, if not, let me know. Like next time you're in chat or something like that. But yeah, um, send me pictures to uh, draw. I like drawing pictures. Sometimes I uh, I go on Reddit and I, I just look for like, uh, you know, requests and stuff of uh, things that people want drawn and stuff like that. So like, you know, I'm always on the prowl for something to draw. <laughs> But yeah, um, it's Friday night, so I'll just keep it going. We're, we're having a good time, but usually I try to keep it around two hours, but I'm having fun. If you guys are having fun, my class is still full. Yeah, so yeah, send me an email, send me a picture. Uh, I'll um, I'll get to it eventually. If, it, if it's something that like inspires me, I'll probably do it pretty quick. But yeah, I like doing dogs. I like doing, um, I want to get better at drawing people. That's why uh, you guys see me do portraits so often. It's it's because like, I want to be the kind of guy that goes to uh, like, just hanging out on the street or at a bar or at a coffee shop or something. And, um, you know, just drawing a picture and, and somebody wants a portrait done. And I do a picture of them uh, while sitting across from them. I want to be that kind of an artist, um, where I'm doing live, uh, pictures of people on request. I think I've got a lot of ways to go before I get there. Um, I thought I might do that last year. Uh, I thought I might just go out, hang out on the street, you know, got my little easel or whatever, you know, like an artist, right? Um, I thought that that'd be kind of cool and just do like, you know, art for people on the street. Uh, I think I got a ways to go before I get there. One, it takes me too long. I, I haven't gotten to the point where I can do a picture of somebody in like 30 minutes or something reasonable. Like nobody's going to sit for you for like four hours <laughs> or something like that. So I'm still working on that. Um, I've been trying to do some speed po uh, uh, pictures where I do only take maybe 30 minutes, but they always come out looking like weird. Like... I don't know, some of the portraits I've done uh, where I try to do it as fast as I can. Like I sit down with paper uh, paper and like paint and I just like kind of go through it and I'm like, I'm going to get this done in 30 minutes or less. They end up looking kind of distorted. I mean, it still kind of looks cool if you're into that kind of like style. But in my mind, I'm like, this does not look like the person. The, the person's got some kind of weird growth on their face that they don't have in real life. Uh, it's not fair to the individual. Um, so I'm still working on that. But yeah, I would love to do portraits of people while they wait. That would be awesome. I see other people do it. Like there's um there's a guy on TikTok. I think he posts to uh, YouTube as well where he does drawings of people like while on a bus or something. And that's kind of cool because like depending on the bus ride or train ride or something like that, they are kind of locked into a space for a while. 
it is kind of creepy to sit across from somebody and stare at them long enough to do a drawing. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I can't even do that. Like, my, my luck, I'll be drawing them and then, like, they'll get to their stop and they'll get up and leave. And I'm still, like, half finished with my drawing. It would look weird. But I don't know. It's a goal of mine. I, I'd like to get to that point. Uh, I would let, like to do commissions of people while they, they sit for me or something like that. That, that would be cool. But we'll see. That's a that's a journey in progress. Oh, I guess I should probably do some of this. It's got belly, at least. Let's get that going. So these are some of the goals that I'd like to work on. Maybe, maybe in 2024. I don't know. Is it? I, I will mention that, like, it's kind of tough because, like, as an artist, you're supposed to, like, um, this is what they tell you, at least. You can do whatever you want, you know? Like, you're the, the great thing about being an artist is, like, literally no one can tell you what to do. You're on your own there. Like, you get to make your own decisions. It's awesome. You know, like, in my day job, I, I, I'm still a freelancer, um, so I do kind of work for myself. But I have clients and the clients are the boss, you know, they tell you what to do. And, you know, when you take on a commission, it's kind of the same way um, where, you know, the client is the boss. They, they tell you how they want their dog drawn or something like that. But largely, you're kind of left to your own devices. And, and it's really up to you. You get to make your own decisions. You get to express yourself. I love that aspect of art. Um, that's why I, I keep coming back to it. It's, it's, it's great to express yourself. Um, what was my point there? Oh, yeah. So, like, there's a downside to that, too. Like, you're kind of, like, you're responsible for yourself, and you know, where, like, it, if you fail, it, it's entirely on you. You can't blame it on somebody else. Um, if you succeed, that's great, but you're probably going to fail at first. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but, yeah. Well, thanks. I, I, I think that would be a lot of fun, uh, honestly. But obviously, you know, it takes a while to do these pictures. Um, maybe I'll get there at some point. Maybe. Uh, that's another thing that I liked about that coffee painting. Um, why I want to kind of explore that a little bit more this year is... Uh, I think it turned out great, and honestly, it only took like an hour, hour and a half or something to do. So, like, if I can create really cool pictures in like an hour, hour and a half, hey, I should probably try to do that just to see how it goes, you know. The other thing I, I, I thought would be cool about, like, coffee art, and I don't know how I would do a live stream from a coffee house, um, but I'm going to try to figure that out because I, I think it would be kind of cool to go to a coffee house sit down literally it's just coffee and water right that's your only and a paintbrush um those are in a piece of paper the, those are your only supplies so like imagine going to a coffee shop sitting down with you know like a little baggie of coffee and your own water that you brought with you like a little bottled water or something like that and you're sitting there doing art in a coffee shop in front of people while they're watching you and stuff like that kind of like on youtube um, but you're like live streaming from there and stuff like that. That sounds like fun. I think that would be fun. Um, I've mentioned before, I'm kind of an introvert in real life. Um, and part of the reason I have a YouTube show is to kind of get over that. I, I'm a shy person. Uh, I'm not likely to walk up to somebody and say, hey, how's it going in real life? Um, so part of the reason why I have a YouTube channel is to kind of get over that. Uh, to be more... Um, I don't know, like, what are the different personalities types? You have introverts and extroverts and all that stuff. I'm, I'm a bit of an introvert, and I, I'd like to work on that. So, to me, sitting down in a public space like a coffee, a house, or something like that, doing art in front of people, I think, I think that would help. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So that's that's a goal of mine over the over the next year. But I kind of had that as a little bit of a goal last year. I just don't think I'm there yet. I think. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know how you're supposed to live stream from a coffee house anyway, where you're basically talking to the people. Like, I'm talking to you guys here. I, I don't know how that would translate to um, 
to like a coffee house. Like say I was at a coffee house and I'm talking to you guys, all the people around me would, well, they might be making noise too. So I don't know how to like drown them out so that you guys don't hear that noise. Um, but also like, would it look like I'm talking to myself? Cause that would be kind of weird. Oh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll give it a shot at some point. Yeah, so I, I like how I like how the face is looking. I, I do think it needs some improvement, but um, that's something that like occurs over time. Although when, whenever I say something needs improvement, that just means that I feel like it needs more layers. So I will work on the face a little bit. And as far as like adding more layers to kind of create that tonal value, I've got some cleanup down here where this kind of like looks washed out. I want to make the transition between the fur, like the brown fur and the white fur, a little bit more natural. Like, and especially around the nose, this needs to like kind of blend in a little bit. So that that'll take some work. Um, I've got the belly here that needs some more development. Um, that actually comes down through here. There'll be a blanket here, and I think he wanted some flowers back here. So, and then down through here needs some like, detail and stuff. So there's a way, a way to go. But it's looking nice so far, I think. It's good. These are all, these are all things that are doable. Um, there's only been like, again, I've been doing this for about a year. And, and, and it's great because I get to look back at what I've done over the past year and kind of reflect upon it. Reflecting back, there's really been only a handful of pictures that I thought were so bad that I'm just going to throw them in the trash. And it's not any of the ones that I've done in the live stream, even though some of them are pretty bad. Um, most of the ones that I've done on the live stream turned out okay, and they turned out okay enough where I could fix them up and stuff. But then there's some that I've looked at, and I'm like, that's just terrible. I just throw it away. It rhymed me for an instant as he touched 20 people. I had to tell. That's cool. Oh, uh, uh, um, yeah, my dad is the uh, Ernest Parnell and stuff. And uh, I told him, I told him he's not allowed in the YouTube channel anymore because he says off the wall stuff. Dad, you're supposed to be banned. Where's my ban button? I'm going to ban you. I'm just kidding. Now it's kind of fun. Um, like I've been talking to my dad lately about like uh, the art and stuff. He's my biggest critic. He he is not shy about telling me something looks bad. So if he says something looks good, maybe it's true. He is not shy about um, telling me how something looks. Get some fur going on down here. I like this. <laughs> no, let my dad watch. I'm telling you. <laughs> I can't be responsible for him. If you're going to hang out here, you're like any other viewer. I reserve the right to kick you to the curb. I'm just joking, of course. I love my dad. We get along great. We hang out a lot lately. Been uh, going for walks and things like that. He's my... Uh, He's, he's my kayak partner. Uh, him and uh, my brother, we go kayaking a lot. We like to do outdoorsy things. It's actually nice to get along with your parents if you can. Like, not everybody's experience is like that, but I like it because um, it is, uh, you know, as you get older in life and stuff, uh, you stop, your friends get busy, they have kids, they, you know, have their own lives and stuff like that. So, like, if you've got somebody like a parent that you can hang out with, um, it's pretty nice. <laughs> Seniors versus the one. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ida. I think it's getting there. A little bit, a little bit more detail. It amazes me how much uh, art is really just kind of like going back over the same places and just adding more layers and details and stuff like that. 
What they don't tell you, well, maybe they do tell you, I don't know, but I'm here to tell you. Uh, art is really just about learning to be patient. And that's another great thing about it. Like, honestly, there's so many things, like people pay a lot of money on like relaxation apps, meditation apps, you know, ways to develop mental well-being and stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of artists, they're not exactly in a space where they're, they've got a lot of great mental well-being, but there's so much potential there because like really it, it, it is so Zen. And I hate to use that word because I'm not 100% sure what it means. I'm not a Buddhist monk or anything like that, but I, I keep thinking about that Buddhist monk that I saw in that documentary where he's just going over the, uh, he's washing the deck and he's literally just washing it. He's on his knees and he's got a little wash rag and he's just washing it a little bit at a time, going back over the same places that he's already done. And the goal isn't really to end up with a clean deck. It's the process of washing the deck. Um, this is the whole point. And, and from that standpoint, I feel like that's art. You know, the process of art is just going back over the same thing over and over again. And that is so such a good opportunity for mental health and cleaning, cleaning out your mind and just, uh, you know, being in a good space mentally. Um, like people who suffer trauma, people who's like, you know, got mental issues or something like that. If, if there's a way to like get them doing art, I, I think that would help. I really do. Like, uh, art, artist therapy, I guess. There you go. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. People would probably actually do it that way, but I can't. I can't not extol the benefits of that. Extol is that a word? I'm gonna have to look that up later. Yeah, I love kayaking. I uh, that that is my go-to hobby. Again, I, I feel like um, you're so close to, like being in a kayak, you're so close to the water. Uh, you're basically one with the water. You might as well be swimming, except that it's less effort. <laughs> yes, Bill, people do sell Paul of his art. But you have to wonder why, like, what are they saying there? Like, just, all right, it's it's fun to make fun of like people selling poop as art, but what are they trying to say there? Like, it, it, are they, do they have a message? Like, wh what is what is the point of poop as art? Like, I'm not gonna say that poop isn't art. Um, it, it's funny, don't get me wrong, but like, are they selling, like, are they trying to say a message or, or like, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the message back behind that? Poop art. Jeez, guys. You won't say, see me making poop and like art out of poop. <laughs> poop would probably not be amazing. You know, now that you think about it, like, I mean, I'm making art out of coffee. You probably could make art out of poop. But like, what's the point? Like, I, I feel like you have to be saying something with it, you know? Like if somebody's saying like, oh, I don't know. Somebody would have to explain that one to me. I'm going to put a little bit of blue here in this nose. I don't know if it's going to translate on camera. But it's catching the light just so. Yeah, this uh, this kind of this live stream's gone on longer than others, but I'm having fun. If you guys are having fun, we'll continue. I feel like I need to put in some texture in this nose to make it look realistic, but I'll come back to that with like the finishing touches and stuff. Hmm. If you guys are enjoying yourselves, I'll, I'll keep going. But I do feel like there's a ways to go here. It's Friday night. I got nowhere to be. Hopefully you guys have good, um, you know, things to do on this weekend or, and things like that. 
I think I talked earlier about some of the things I have in mind. Oh, a stingray. That's cool. Yeah. So you probably live, um, so you probably go kayaking on like, um, like salt water and stuff like that. So here in Kentucky, we've got like a lot of, um, uh, Kentucky and the United States, uh, we've got a lot of, um, internal waterways that are all freshwater. So like we've got turtles, we've got snakes, we've got, um, you know, fish, birds, things like that. But it, it's, uh, it's all freshwater stuff. Um, I've lived in areas where like I've seen stingrays and that's kind of cool. Um, but the most we've got around here are like these gigantic turtles. I would love to live on the coast where I can go, uh, saltwater kay kayaking. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, I used to have that hanging up on this uh, wall back here, but it fell down. Um, yeah, that was a watercolor picture of, uh, me and my dad going kayaking. That's on this channel. If you guys want to, so like speaking of kayaking, I actually did a watercolor painting after I got back from kayaking. Um, I don't know how you would search for that, but, uh, yeah, if you want to see what kind of like kayaking I do around here, it's, it's on, it's on creeks. It's like very, um, rural Kentucky kind of, uh, waterways. Uh, yeah, I actually did a, um, uh, a painting of a, uh, of a creek nearby that I go kayaking on with my dad. So if you guys wanted to check that out, I uh, I think you'd have to search to maybe kayak on this channel or something like that. I don't know, but that was a watercolor painting. I, I like how it turned out. I like that style. Um, not a lot of detail in it and stuff, but as far as like landscapes, I don't do a lot of landscapes. So that was a good experiment. I would like to do more landscapes. So maybe I will, uh, I will focus on that. But yeah, thanks, kid, for pointing that out. I did do, um, I did do that. I think as far as kayak trips that go this year, I might try to um, go on more adventures. I'd love to do a uh, overnight kayak trip. Uh, I live close enough to the Ohio River, and what's cool about the Ohio River is it de it ends up in the uh, Mississippi River. My lifelong goal would be to kayak all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio, down to New Orleans. Um, that would probably be a several months trip. So I don't know how I would accomplish that, but it's always been like kind of a bucket list item. I would love to do that. Of course, as I get older, I'd start changing it up from like, well, do I want to kayak or do I want to take a riverboat, uh, like cruise or something like that. But that's definitely something on my bucket list. I would love to explore the Mississippi River that way. I grew up uh, reading uh, Mark Twain and Huckleberry Finn. Um, that's some of my literary heroes growing up. Um, so something like that is definitely on my bucket list. I would love to. Uh, I would love to see the open river. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, Bill. Um, yeah. So like Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn got me in trouble, I, I think, a lot as a kid because, like, he kind of, him and Tom Sawyer and basically Mark Twain kind of had this, like, relativist, relativistic moral view on things. So, like, in my mind, I, I was like, well, you know, as long as I don't get caught, it's fine. So I used to get in trouble as a kid that way, but I, I loved uh, Huckleberry Finn. I would still, like, I, there was a point where I would read Huckleberry Finn every couple of years. That's how much I love it. Um, in fact, now that I'm now that it's fresh in my memory, I, I think I'll download the audiobook and listen to it again. It's been a while. But Huckleberry Finn, definitely. I was asked to read that in like high school and um, I don't know, I just fell in love with it. And then later I, I kind of uh, read Tom Sawyer. I love that as well. Oh, thanks, kid. Uh, 13th video down under videos would be me kayaking on the Ohio uh, or sorry on like the Elkhorn River here in Kentucky with my dad. Um, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, like it, it's really cool to go off and do some sort of like adventure like that and then come back and make a painting out of it. 
which was the whole idea there. Um, I'd like to do more of that, honestly. It's like go out and have like some little fun experience and then come back and do a painting. Good memory there, kid. I had totally forgotten about that. Mark Twain is the third cousin via an ancestor from Kentucky. Awesome. I love Mark Twain. Uh, my favorite writer growing up. Uh, as I got older, uh, that same sort of uh, sense of adventure kind of like influenced my life. Um, uh, having read Huckleberry Finn, I naturally fell in with uh, uh, Jack Kerouac, if you guys are familiar with him. Kind of the same thing, just going out and seeing what there is in America. Uh, it definitely influ influenced some of my greatest uh, adventures where, you know, you just hit the open road and you just see where life takes you. That's always been something I've been into. Um, yeah, Huckleberry Finn, Jack Kerouac, totally my, my heroes. I don't know how much of that translates to my art. I really should do like more adventure art. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know what that would look like, adventure art. Mark Twain is your great, great uncle on your mom's side? That's awesome. That's really cool. Well, you know, I'm a fan of your great, great uncle on your mom's side. Not just, uh, well, Huckleberry Finn and um, uh, Tom Sawyer, well, probably Tom Sawyer is probably what he's most known for, but Huckleberry Finn was just like such a cool thing. Um, but, he, you know, even some of his other works and stuff like that, just him, um, Mark Twain is your pet cat. Wow, like everybody's into Mark Twain here. This is cool. Yeah, I love Mark Twain. Uh, just, uh, you know, like, I, I, I wanted to be a riverboat captain, honestly. That would have been awesome uh, just because of Mark Twain. That's how much into him I was. But just the, just the idea of just going out there and just seeing what there is. So, like, Huckleberry Finn, for example, like, he just took a raft down the, uh, down the Mississippi River. How cool is that? You know, he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know where he's going to end up. He doesn't know if a big storm's going to come and blow him away. That's sort of just like, you know... Just seeing what's out there. I, I love that kind of thing. I would love to go um, kayaking, for example, down the uh, Mississippi River. I, I think it would take, I think I calculated some time and taking maybe three months, but maybe it'd be a little bit less. I don't know. Well, it, it does sound like my dogs want to head out, so I probably am going to end this stream, but... Um, and you can see I got a ways to go, so I'll probably finish it up off camera and just kind of post it up on the community tab. But um, I did mention my emails out there, so like if somebody wants to send me some pictures to uh, to draw, I'm always open to that. Um, no commitments, like I'm not going to say like I'm definitely going to draw it. Uh, I reserve the right to like not get to it anytime soon. Um, but I, I, you know, I do collect these pictures. Um, Lorraine, who is often in here, like I forgot her picture was in there, but I, I eventually did that. Uh, so whatever you guys send me, I will t definitely take it under advisement, but um, I will finish up this picture probably um, probably tomorrow. And uh, Rome, um, I'll definitely send this out to you. My condolences on, on your, the loss of your dog. I, I, you know, I hate that. It is the worst experience that people have to deal with. So definitely my condolences and my heart goes out to you. But yeah, I, so I can continue working on it, but I do think it's gonna take a little while. I hopefully you guys can see where I'm going with this and um, you know, um, hopefully you guys had fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're at almost three hours and it's not gonna get done uh, tonight, but, and my dogs are kind of like scratching at the door. So I am gonna kind of cut this short um, hopefully you guys had fun just hanging out with me. Um, but, uh, I appreciate it as always. You guys are so great. Um, you know, the fact that you guys hang out in here with me, uh, is, is awesome to me. Hopefully you guys uh, have a good time as well. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys appreciate the art that I do and, um, maybe you might learn something from it, but that, that'd be awesome too. But 
in the least. I, I hopefully you guys uh, enjoy hanging out with me on a Friday night. But anyway, I can ramble on. My dog wants to head out. You can see the little dog over there by the door wanting to go. Like uh, if I don't cut this short, probably go on my floor. Yeah, see, scratching. I love that. All right, so. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me on Friday night. Uh, I'll probably be back Tuesday. Uh, I'll finish up this picture in the meantime. And um, Rome, again, sorry for the loss of your pet. Um, but uh, hopefully this will bring some uh, some solace. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys had a good time. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.